Well, our praise. Write this down. The title of today's class is They Tried to Use the Bible to Destroy Us. They Tried to Use the Bible to Destroy Us. And what prompted this class is that many people, um, I did an interview with a brother named Shaheen and several other in South Africa where they all said the Bible was used to destroy us, which is true. So I'm going to go through a little history on that today. Uh, who's reading for me? Shalom, Bishop. Officer Leon. Officer Leon. Uh, yeah. Open up for me, Isaac. Um, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And let's start at verse 5. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. All right, we need another mic. That mic is buzzing and... Give me a better mic, please. All right, read on. Keep therefore and do them. So keep therefore and do them. Uh -huh. For this is your wisdom. This, the God's laws, his commandments are your wisdom. And your understanding. And your understanding. And the sight of the nations. And the sight of the nations. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Uh, let me ask you, when did this come to pass? Show of hands, when did this come to pass? Yes, Yehoshua, right? Yes, sir. Under King David? No. Uh, Officer Micah? King Solomon. King Solomon. Did come to King Solomon? Yes, he is correct. King Solomon. Remember Queen of Sheba? But is that really what this is talking about? It said in this, uh, is this sure it would? Keep their foot and do them, for this is your wisdom, and you understand the sight of the nations. So Queen of Sheba just was one person. So although that was a look, a glimpse, when did this come to pass? The answer is, oh, oh, go ahead, Officer Mendel. It yet. Right, it has not happened yet. It has not happened yet. Um, give me the precept in Zechariah. Uh, what was it? 823, somewhere around there. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all forgive me if I pull the wrong verse. It's been a while. Turn it on. Press the button. Come on, you. Testing. I use this. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So that's future tense. Okay, that's just an example of what's going to happen. And the next precept is Zechariah 14, where it says the nations must go up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Everybody understand that? Okay. So now, back to Deuteronomy 4. Where were you at, Officer Leon? Deuteronomy 4, what verse? Six. Six, go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So today nobody says that about us. They don't say that about us right now, but they will. Okay. So now notice what it says. Keep therefore. See, ver read verse 6 again, just the top part. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do them. Now give me Revelation twenty-two fourteen, showing you it's going to say the same thing. Very similar. I'll say it that way. Very similar. Revelation 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they 
that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That's what say. So from the Old Testament to the New, it's going into the same thing. Go ahead, read on. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Right. Let's go on back to Deuteronomy 4, please. And verse 7. Verse 7, Deuteronomy 4 and 7. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? And let's get the precept on that. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 13. Nobody likes Officer Liam's mic. I'm seeing messages saying his mic is terrible. Officer Yosef. Okay, go ahead, Officer Liam, read that. Nehemiah 9 and verse 13. Listen good, listen up. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai. So the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Go ahead. And spakest with them from heaven. Uh -huh. And gavest them right judgments. And gave to the Israelites right judgments. And true laws. And true laws. Good statutes. Good statutes. And commandments. And commandments. Go ahead. And madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath. And made known unto them, the Israelites, thy holy Sabbath. Go ahead. And commandest them precepts. And commandest us precepts. Statutes, statutes, and laws, and laws, by the hand of Moses, thy servant. By the hand of Moses, thy servant. So I'm, I'm starting off showing you the beauty, the beautiful context of the Bible, of the Scripture. So I'm starting off that way. Give me a Second Chronicles chapter 15, and let's see what happened. 15 and three. Second Chronicles 15 and verse three. Now, for a long season. Now, for a long season. Israel hath been without the true God. So, when we sinned, we were without the true God. Go ahead. And without a teaching priest. And we had no teaching priest. Go ahead. And without law. And without law. And without law. Those same beautiful laws that God gave us, he said, there came a, there came a time when we would be without law. And without law, you without the true God. Go ahead. But when, they, but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. So just as it was back then, it is today. But when they in their trouble, are we in trouble today? Yes, sir. You better believe it. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. We always got to keep that in memory. Uh, Second Chronicles 17 and 1. Second Chronicles 17 and 1. And I want you to pay close attention. Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead. Come on with this mic. Uh, Yosef. What thing are hurting my ears? I'm blaming Yosef for everything. Testing. Okay, so let's read that again. And Jehoshaphat? Yes, sir. Second Chronicles 17 and 1. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. So we're talking about Jehoshaphat, right? Now let's jump down, Officer Liam. Jump yes, down to verse 7. Verse 7. Also, in the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to Benel, and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nathaniel. And to Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. To teach in the cities of Judah, go ahead. And with them he sent Levites. He sent Levites. Even Shemaiah. Shemaiah. And Nathaniah. Nathaniah. And, Ze Nathaniah and Zebediah. Uh -huh. And Ashael. Ashael. And Shemarmoth. And Jehonathan. And Adonijah. And Tobiah. And Tabadonijah. Levites. And with them Elishama and Jeroham, priests. And they taught in Judah. And had the book of the law of the Lord with them. And went from throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. Now I wanted to read this because when we were out the true God, teachers were 
instructed to go into the various cities and teach. We think that started with the 12 apostles. Mm -mm. This teaching been going on for quite some time when we went into captivity, when we were under foreign dominion. We sent, the Lord had teachers go out to teach us his law. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Jeremiah 36 and 1. Look at Jeremiah 36 and 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book. Take and, thee the roll of a book. Go and, ahead. and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee. From the days of Josiah, even unto this day. So in the Bible, not only do you have laws, statutes, and commandments, but there are prophecies that speak against Israel, that's northern kingdom, mm. and Judah, southern kingdom, and against all the nations. Everybody going to get it. Everybody going to get it. It started with us, though. It started with our people. Read. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I, pur which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Now the Lord said regarding Judah, he said, I, I hope that they hear this and they can repent so I ain't got to do the evil I plan to do on them. That's what the Lord said regarding Judah. You're going to put some respect on it. That's right. Now, I'm going to jump, jump on up. I'm going to jump to 1 Maccabees chapter 1. And let's start at verse 41. I'm going, this is the Greek captivity. The Greeks, the Greeks. Yes, sir. Yes, the friendly neighborhood white man. Go ahead. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his old kingdom that all should be one people. In so, uh, Officer jo Joseph, can you put the first image up for me of the Greek standing before the fire pit? Yep, keep that on. Read it again, Officer Leon. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his old kingdom that all should be one people. So this is the beginning of democracy, that all should be one people. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. Leave your laws. So all the heathen... Agreed according to the commandment of the king. All the other nations agreed to do that thing. Go ahead. Now we see the same conduct today in today's society. All nations are agreeing they want to be democratic. They want a democratic society. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Notice what it says. Many of our people consented to his religion. There was no difference between politics and religion. It was the same thing, one and the same thing. I want everybody to see that. So what they call democracy today, it's still a religion. Whether you call it politics or religion, it's one and the same. And it all goes back, remember what Nimrod did when he, he, he united all people as one against God? It's the same thing under the Greeks. It's the same thing today under America. Read that again, Leon. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols mm -hmm. and profaned the Sabbath. Uh -huh. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That they should follow the strange laws of the land. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice mm -hmm. and drink offerings in the temple. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, mm -hmm. that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Now, what's the purpose of all that? Go ahead. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. That's the purpose of having us leave from God's laws and following the strange customs of the land, that we might forget God's law and change all the ordinances. Go ahead. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, 
He said he should die. Jump down to verse 56. So there was a, de a law of death if you did not obey the King Antiochus commandment. It was the same law that Nebuchadnezzar set up in Daniel the third chapter. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 56. And when they had and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, which Oops, they officer, yo, so give me that next one. Read again. I'm sorry. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which when, they found. So they the Greeks would rip up our Bible. The word Bible just means collection of, of books. Okay, that's all it means. Read it again. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. See that? They burnt them with fire. Go ahead. And wheresoever was found with any of the book of the testament, or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. So that was a law under the Greeks. And many of us, or not many of us, some of you think it cannot happen today. Book banning has already begun in the United States of America, okay? Book banning. It's gonna get to burning in a moment, in a while. Chapter two, Liam, verse 45, please. First Maccabees chapter two and verse 45. Mm. Then Mattathias. Now Mattathias was, a, we, we tend to, we go to Judah Maccabee first, but his father was a mighty man too. His Remember, father. the spirit that Judah Maccabee had on him came from his father first. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. We tend to leave Danny out. No, Daddy was a mighty man. Read that again. Then Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel, uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. They pursued also after the proud men, and the work prospered in their hand. The work prospered in their hand. Come on, watch this. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. So when the Greeks started to take our records, Mattathias and his crew would defeat the Greeks and get all our records from them, our biblical records from them. Everybody see that? Go ahead. Read it again. I mean. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles and out of the hand of kings, Neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. And they did not suffer the sinner to triumph. Chapter 3 now, verse 48. First Maccabees 3 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. and now this is Judah Maccabee. Go ahead. And laid open the book of the law. So when they got our records back, it says they laid open the book of the law. Wherein? Hey, hey, hey put that picture up on the screen for me, the first one. Yep, yep. Here's a, an example of the book of the law, the Bible. Read again. And laid open the book of the law. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathen started to put their images in our book. Open that book right there. Yep. Look at that. that that's supposed to be Jacob wrestling the angel. Are you kidding me? Look like two sodomites, two LGBT members. The hell is going on here? Exactly. There you go. You can't make this stuff up. So now that was during the time of the Greeks and what happened with our Bible, our records. Let's go to see what happened during the time of Rome. So before I get to Rome, now I'm going to steal. Daniel prophesied about Rome. So let's open it with Daniel first because he spoke about the Roman Empire. Daniel 7 verse 7. The book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. A fourth beast. Go ahead. Now, this fourth beast is Rome. Okay. A fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Now, that part right there. You see that where it says it devoured, break in pieces. Here's the part and stamped the residue with the feet of it. When you stamp something, you leave what? A mark, an imprint. So what did they leave? What, what did they imprint our people with? Their religions, their customs, their ideas. So the same thing the Greeks did, Rome did too. And remember, the United States of America, biblically, is an extension of the Roman Empire. I need everybody to understand that, okay? So read that again, Officer Leon. And after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, 
dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. The military is powerful, go ahead. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Mm -hmm. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So this Roman Empire was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. They, the ten common markers did exist back then under different names. Everybody understand that? From there, Revelation 12, where the Apostle John spoke about Rome symbolically in a similitude. We're going to read Revelation 12, and we're going to start at verse 1. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And if, also, if you have any images for this, I don't know if you do because I didn't, I didn't send you any. Go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So this woman, when you go to Jeremiah 6 and 2, Officer Leon, Read that. Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So this woman represents the nation of Israel. So when we go back to Revelation 12 and 1 again. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Now this sun and moon clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Give me that in Proverbs 6, 23, please. Proverbs 6 and 23. Mm -hmm. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. The law is light. The law is light. So when it talks about this woman was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet. Hey, give me that in Genesis 1. Is it 14 about what the, they call the sun and the moon? Uh, Genesis 1 and 16. 16, I'm 16, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Genesis 1, 16. And God made two great lights. That's the sun and the moon. Go ahead. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So these two great lights are the sun and the moon. Now we know according to Proverbs 6, 23, it says the law is light. So when we go to Revelation 12 again, it's letting us know that Israel had the law. Mm. Okay, read that again. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, when you read Genesis, it tells you that Joseph, we're not going to read it today, he had a dream about the 11 stars bowing before him and his brothers got mad his daddy got mad said what shall me and your mother bow before you too it was all symbolizing that joseph would become great in egypt and israel would bow to him for saving their lives everybody with me so far all right verse two and she being with child cried travailing in birth uh -huh. and pain to be delivered and pain to be delivered Go ahead. Now, give me that in Matthew 121. This is what is, here's a precept. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the purpose of the Messiah is to save his people. So we were waiting. We pained to be delivered. We wanted the Messiah to come to deliver us. Back to Revelation 12, verse 2 again. Revelation 12 and 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Because we were under what? Roman dominion. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The third part of the stars. Remember verse 1 talked about the 12 stars. So the third part of the stars 
refers to Judah, Benjamin, and Levi and a remnant of the northern kingdom. The third part was four parts. Everybody with me on that? Yes, sir. Okay, read that again. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman mm -hmm. which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now let's see who that dragon is talking about. Matthew 2, 13. Matthew 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Herod will seek the young child child to destroy him. Herod was an Idumean, a Roman. Herod was an Idumean, an Edomite, a Roman. So this great red dragon, when we go back to Revelation 12, is talking about Rome, but in particularly Herod. Okay, right. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine. Exactly. All of these were Edomites. You had Antipater, Julius Caesar, the, all Edomites. All of these guys that's men mentioned right there, you see right there. Edomites. Officer Leon, where are you at? Revelation 12 and 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So now Christ came on the scene. Okay, read. And she brought forth a man child. So the man child is Christ. The man child. I'm stop right there. No, we don't. And she brought forth a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So being caught up to God and to his throne. Go to Acts chapter 1 and 9. Let's start there. Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received them out of their sight. Christ was taken up and a cloud, was a chariot received them out of their sight. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go, like, so go into now, heaven. So now what I want to discuss is what did Christ teach us while he walked with us? Watch this. Give me Matthew 4 and 4. I didn't forget the topic. Again, the topic is they tried to destroy us using the Bible. I remember the topic. But I just want to show you the honor and glory of the Bible first. The book of, yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by blood alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Christ glorified and honored the word of God. He said, we have to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That means the whole Bible. So when you hear Christians say, oh, no, no, don't deal with that part of the Bible. I don't know. They're wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. Okay. If we can keep it, we have to keep it. Everybody understand that? Read again, Officer Leon. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now watch the Hey, give me that one that just popped into my head. Give me, mm, and Isaiah says he will magnify the law. Who knows what that one is? That's the one I want. Isaiah, four, what is it, 42? 42. Give me that. Give me that. Isaiah 42 and verse 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law. He will mag this is about Christ. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. And make it honorable. So Christ never did away with God's laws. He would magnify the law and make it honorable. Okay? For example, give me Matthew 5 real quick. Just for a quick example, then we're going to move back to the topic. Uh, give yeah, go ahead read that. 
Matthew 5 and 28. No, no, no. Let's, let's deal with uh, 21. Oh, Matthew 5. Okay, yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. So now this is how he gave the law. Now he's going to make it honorable by showing us the root of it. Go ahead. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. You got some Israelites who are angry with us without a cause. They don't know us, never met us, but they hate our guts. They're praying and wishing death upon brothers and sisters. Okay. Christ said what? Read that again. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. You got to start asking people, hey, did they, what did they do to you? Did they commit adultery against you? Nope. Did they uh, steal from you? Nope. Did they bear false witness against you? Nope. Did they, give me another law. Did they lie on you? That's bearing false witness. Uh, anything. Steal from you or whatever. It, the answer would be nope. Well, what you so mad for? I don't know. I'm just mad. Read it again. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Uh -huh. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka. Now when you see that word Raka, when you look at the, the precept right there, it's a vain fellow. Another I'll give you another word for vain fellow. Purple faggots. Purple faggots. That's Raka. Go ahead shall be in danger of the council, mm -hmm. but whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now you might ask, what's the difference between rakah or thou fool? There is no difference. It's the same slanderous insult for no reason. Now I understand you calling a brother name because he committed adultery against you. He stole from you. He said, mother, he did this to me, he did that. But Christ is saying, this guy did nothing to you. And you got an attitude. What you mad for, bruh? What you mad for? Christ said you are in danger of hellfire. Y'all see that right there? Hellfire. That's that thermal nuclear fire that's going to come on the earth. You in danger of that. And all y'all following behind that foolishness, you are in danger of hellfire. All we could do is warn you. That's all we could do. Go ahead. Therefore... If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. So now you want to keep the high holidays. And then you remember, you know what? I was slandering my brother. I called him Raka. I called him thou fool. I called him a purple faggot. <laughs> Go ahead. Leave there thy gift before the altar. Leave your gift before the altar. And go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, uh -huh. and then come and offer thy gift. Then you come offer you. Everybody understand that? So, this is an easy law. So this is how Christ magnified the law and made it honorable. That's just one example. There's many more, but that's for another time. Let's go on back now. Go back to Luke 10 now in 1. Luke 10 and 1. The book of Luke chapter 10 and 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, mm -hmm. and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. This is the same thing we read about in the book of Chronicles, is it not? Yes, sir. Joseph had did the same thing. But we, all, we say well, it started here. No, it didn't start here. They was doing that way back then. Because Israel tends to forget the law. Read that again. And after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore he said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. Why is the harvest great? Because Israel numbers what, brothers? Sand of the sea. We can never have enough teachers. Never. Dealing with the sand. That's right. Read that again. The harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. The laborers are few. We see a couple of uh, thousands and thousands of brothers go, oh, that's a lot. No, that's not enough. It's not enough. When you number the sand of the sea, it's never enough. There's places 
we're not going to be able to get to. You know that there's some countries that don't even allow a Bible to be entered into? Some of these Muslim countries. So you cannot enter it with a, a Bible. I hope you all understand that. So then what do you do? You got, we got to depend on things like YouTube, the Internet, to reach the people. Okay? Right, that's the sand of the sea. Look at that. You can't number that. We don't read again, Officer Liam. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So Christ commanded us to pray for laborers. What kind of laborers? Faithful laborers. Because guess what? Out of, let's say out of every 10 brothers that come in, I would dare say, he said one. I'll be nice and say two are faithful. The rest are just there. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, brothers, and I'm not trying to hurt none of your feelings in case this, this shoe hits you, because you know who you are. Some brothers are dead weight. They're just here. Some of you are just here for booty. You want a woman? Some of you are waiting for that job. And then as soon as you get that job or that woman, we don't see you no more. Or you hear you half-stepping. I don't waste time with brothers like that. I keep it moving. Hey, let's pray for laborers, bro. Come on, come join me. We gotta send pray for laborers. Cause this group here is a pilot doodoo. That's how I roll. Why? Cause that's what the scriptures say. Y'all be trying to work with, I gotta work with the brother. He, he, mm -mm. no, forget him. Forget him. Where you at, Officer Liam? That was verse two. Bishop. Go ahead. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. Oh, give me that scripture in Sirach 29. I'm sorry. Y'all mean, this is mean. He don't, he don't even try to work with people. I don't work with lazy people. I don't work with slothful brothers. No, you, you are, you're a piece of dirt doo-doo. I'm being nice. You're a piece of doo-doo. Is it 29 or is it 22? I forgot. About the slothful man. It's like doo-doo. It's out of verse 1. 22 and 1. Read that. Sirach 22 and verse 1. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. A filthy stone is doo-doo. Mm. Go ahead. He's going to make a plain in the next verse. And everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. That's why some of your wives even leave you. You Man. know who you are. Your wife said, this dude is lazy. He lazy. And she don't want to stick around with you because you know you ain't no damn good. But you just wanted it now. When you got it, the real you came out. Go ahead. A slothful man, a lazy brother, is compared to the filth of a dunghill. You compared to a pile of doo doo. Damn. Go ahead. Every man that takes it up. When you make a mistake and lift up that pile of doo doo, you thought it was a real rock, it was a pile of crap. Go ahead. Will shake his hand. Will shake your hand. Was that it, Leon? That's it. So, you said we'll shake his hand and get rid of the brother. Get rid of it and don't deal with him. Some of y'all be trying to deal with the brother. You got the doo doo and you rolling it around in your hand. Here's some doo-doo. I'm trying to work with it. I'm trying to see what I can do with this. It's a pile of doo-doo. Drop it. Wash your hands. The hell is going on here? What are you going to say? Yeah. Hey, in order, in order to be built up, you got you to gotta have that spirit in you. You got to be faithful in order for us to work with you to build you up into that leader, into that brother that you're supposed to be. But some of you brothers... If you don't got that spirit in you up that we could work with, you like doodle. We gonna cast you off, man. Okay? Hey, there's a saying in the world, brothers, you cannot polish a turd. Some brothers cannot, you, there's nothing you could do with them. You can't polish a turd. Deacon just said you gotta have that willing spirit. That's the only way we could work with you. You have to be willing. Exactly. Second Timothy 3.16. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. See what it says? All scripture. So I don't know what Christians are talking about. The Bible says all scripture. That's the same thing Christ said. What did he say in Matthew 4 and 4? What do you say? Y'all remember? Live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We shall live by every word. So Paul is saying the same thing right here. All scripture. Read it again, officer. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable and is profitable for doctrine, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for correction, mm -hmm. for instruction in righteousness, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that the man of God may be perfect, that you and I may be perfect. Go ahead. 
truly furnished unto all good works. Uh -huh. From there, give me 1 Timothy 4.13. So the Bible is necessary for our lives. The Bible is what fixes you as an individual. The Bible is what builds you up as an individual, builds your marriage to make it strong, and builds the congregation and the nation. Everybody understand that? Individual, married, congregation, and nation. The, that's what the Bible does. If you're not using the word of God, this is why I, I want you to peep this. A lot of brothers and sisters that leave this truth, one of the first things to suffer is their marriage. They often divorce, fall apart, there's hatred, they're in child support court, they, all kind of madness pops off. Why? Because now the Bible, they're not utilizing the instructions given. Read that, Officer Leon. This is the book of First Timothy. Chapter and you as an individual, them as an individual, they slide back into hatred, drugs, uh, prostitution, whatever. Only fans. We had one sister, she's on only fans now. So she didn't believe that all scripture is profitable for reproof and correction and things of that nature. She didn't believe that no more. Okay. Read that again, all of a sudden, where you at? First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. Go ahead. Till I come, give attendance to reading. You hear what Paul says? Till I come, give attendance to reading. Reading what? The Bible. Go ahead. To exhortation. To exhortation. To doctrine. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift. No, that was it. Okay. Now Isaiah 34, 16, please. Now to the Old Testament. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. See that? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. When it says no one of these shall fail, that means none of the prophecies in this Bible shall fail. Let me give an example. 1 Kings 8.56. We coming right back, Leon. The book of 1 Kings 8 and verse, fi verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that I've given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There have not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. See that? They have not failed one word of all his good promise. Not one word will fail. So when we go back to Isaiah 34, 16, let's read that one more again. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. People often ask, how do you know the Bible is a true book? When you go through Deuteronomy 28, 15 down about slavery and oppression and colonialism, you ask the brother, ask, did that happen? Yes. They have to admit, yes, that happened to us. Then as sure as that happened. All the other writings and prophecies about deliverance, guess what, brothers? It's going to happen, too. Everybody understand that? Read on, Leon. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. You can't mate the Bible with no other book. Go ahead. For my mouth, it hath commanded. God's mouth commanded these words. Go ahead. And his spirit, it hath gathered and them. And his spirit, it hath gathered them. So now we were talking about Rome. So what I showed you is what Christ taught, what the spirit of Christ through Paul taught regarding our records, the Bible, to constantly read it, be in meditation on it, okay? Read every word. None of the words of this book shall fail. How Christ uh, taught the law, magnified the law, and made it honorable. So I also said that America is an extension of ancient Rome. That fourth beast, so we're going to discuss that fourth beast, as America today, and what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel. Back to Daniel 7, because Daniel talked about a lot of things. Not that Daniel understood everything, because he didn't, but he understands a lot more today. Mm. I said something right there. Y'all didn't catch that, but mm. it's all right. Daniel 7 and 19. Daniel, huh? Daniel chapter 7, verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Go ahead. Which was diverse from all the others. Which was different from all the other beasts. Go ahead. Exceeding dreadful. This beast is exceeding dreadful. Whose teeth were of iron. The teeth were like iron. And his nails of brass. Nails like brass. 
was devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Ah, uh, see that part right there again? Stamped the residue with the feet. I Meaning put their philosophies. When they stamped you, they left that imprint on you. <laughs> Democracy, Christianity, whatever it is, that's what they put in your brain. What verse was that, what was it, Leo? That was verse 19. Go ahead. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up. Put it back up to ten horns again, because I, I, like I said, them ten horns is the same ten horns today. Read that again, Leon. Yes, sir. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. The three that fell. Uh, France fell. That's the French-American War. Britain fell, that was the War of Independence, and Spain fell, that was the Spanish-American War. Now, when they f lost the war against what became the United States of America, all the, f I want y'all to listen good, all the French did not leave this country. All the Spanish did not leave this country. All the British did not leave this country. Those that remained behind, they formed themselves a more perfect union. Everybody understand that? And they became the United States of America. That's how it began. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read that again, Liam. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even so of... So when it says, and of the other which came up, that's America. That part right there. Right. Mm -hmm. That part right there is America. And I'm going to slip right by me. But read it again, verse 20. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. So three fell before that other which came up, which was America, go ahead. Even of that horn. Even of that horn, America. That had eyes. That had eyes. He had vision. This horn had vision. Go ahead. And a mouth that spake very great things, mm -hmm. whose look was more stout than his fellows. Meaning he was greater. This horn that came up was greater than Spain. Greater than France, greater than Britain. How so? This horn had eyes. Eyes mean what? Vision. The Industrial Revolution was this country here. All the great inventions, including airplanes, flying, going to the moon, nuclear war, the bombs, the missiles, here. Scientific guns. Industry. That's this place here. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. France had to get their technology from here. Spain got their technology from here. Britain got their technology from America here. So read that part again, Liam. And it had, it, the part about the, the eye and the horn, even of that horn. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things. So that mouth is their media. That mouth is their media that is global. Go ahead. Whose look was more stout than his fellows. Whose look, they became greater than their fellows. All the other European countries, America's greater than every last one of them. You understand that? Yes, sir. That's why in the New Testament, it calls this place Babylon the what? The great. The great. It's the greatest nation on earth. Everybody understand that? All right. I hope y'all do. I hope y'all do. Right. This is their, uh, this is their media. Their media ha is the greatest. It's the mouth that speaks great things. The lies against God, against the Bible, against the Israelites. This, their media is worldwide. Their media even dictates what the other European media says. I hope you all understand that. Okay, okay. Very good. Now from there, Officer Leon. Yes, sir. Give me 2nd Ezra 1139. Second Ezra chapter 11 and verse 39. Art not thou, sorry, art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? So we're still talking about the fourth beast. Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. You see what Christ said? To whom I made to reign in my world. Go ahead. That the end of their times might come through them. So the end of the world is going to come through America. And her allies. Go ahead. And the fourth came. And the fourth came. What verse you at? That was verse 40. This is verse 40. You're at verse 40. Go ahead. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world. You see that? It overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world. Let me show you that. It had power. Give me that Revelation 17. I think it's the last verse. About that whore. 
See, there are many similitudes that reference America that churches all ignore. They go, oh, nobody knows who. Maybe it's just the Vatican. Oh, you think it's just the Vatican? Okay. You're wrong, pastor. You don't know what you're talking about. Right. Revelation 17, read that. Revelation 17 and verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. Read, put it on the screen. Hey, hey. Read verse, read, let me look at Liam. Read verse one, let me hear about she sat on the, no, the, be, the beast with seven heads. Revelation, I'm not looking at it, so I need you to get it for me. Revelation chapter 17 and one. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore. The great whore. That sitteth upon many waters. That sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Mm -hmm. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. So seven heads and ten horns. Now we want to know who this whore is. Jump down to the last verse for time's sake. And the woman which thou sowest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Y'all see that? That woman which thou sowest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's what I wanted right there. Why? Because when we go back off Siliam, second, second Ezra, Ezra, chapter 11 and verse 40 mm -hmm. and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world see that and had power over the world this is that same whore it's just using a different similar to it everybody understand that i hope y'all taking notes go ahead with great fearfulness with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth and over the whole compass of the earth which with much Wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. Go ahead. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. With what? With deceit. With what? With deceit. With deceit. Now chapter 12, verse 10 to 13, we're going to read. Second Ezra chapter 12 and verse 10. And he said unto me, this... Hey, uh, uh, do you have the eagle? Not the regular eagle. I want the Esdras eagle. I don't know if y'all got that one. I know I just sprung that on you. It's all right. Officer Liam, read. Second Edges 12 and 10. And he said unto me, This is the interpreta interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. So the angel is telling Ezra that vision, that dream that Daniel saw, Daniel didn't understand it, but the angel is revealing it to Ezra. He said that was an eagle. Read it again, Liam. The eagle whom thou sowest come up from the sea. You go, if you don't have it, Officer Joseph, just find me any eagle. Oh, yeah, that's it right there. Go ahead, because right, it said the eagle had three heads. Go ahead, three main heads. Go ahead, read it again. The eagle whom thou sowest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. See that part right there? But it was not expounded unto him. It was not explained to Daniel. Go ahead. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. What verse you at? That's, that was verse 12. Verse 12, go ahead. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth. Can you, get, can you put up the next eagle? The one with uh, the modern day eagle. That's fine, go ahead. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth. And it shall be feared upon all the kingdoms that were before it. It shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. So again, it started with Rome and ends with America. It's the same eagle, same eagle, same eagle. Everybody understand that? All right, all right. Good, good, good. We're cooking with gas right now. From there, give me Daniel 7.23. Right, that's, that was the Roman symbol right there is the eagle. Very good. That was Rome. Okay. And this is America. It's the same beast. The same beast. Y'all let these churches fool you if you want. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, 23. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. 
right. which shall be diverse from all kingdoms mm -hmm. and shall devour the whole earth. And shall devour the whole earth. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Shall tread this earth down and break it in pieces. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings uh -huh. that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Mm -hmm. Spain, France, and Britain. Go ahead. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. See that part right there? And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Like what? God is white. Jesus is white. The angels are white. The Israelites are white. See? We set them up in Israel 1948. Those are our people. That's an example, okay? That's an example. Uh, uh, give me um, uh, uh, Israel, 1948, modern state. Give me that one, if y'all got that. If y'all don't got it, it's all right. Okay. And they went to great lengths to establish Israel. I mean, to establish this modern state of Israel. From 1917, the plan was already in motion with the Balfour Declaration. Okay, look it up. They set this up. America and Britain was behind this. Why? To establish the, the lie. This is the great words they spoke against the Most High. This is an example. Okay? Right, that's the Balfour Declaration right there. All right? Hey, do y'all have um, Darwin's evolution? Uh, you probably not have it, but if you could probably find it on Google. Okay. Darwin's evolution. Because I remember in school they used to teach us this. There is no God. They get you on both ends. If you, if you don't believe in God, they give you evolution. If you believe in God, he looks like them. Right. That's what they do. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the, uh, the ape. The amoeba. I think it was an amoeba, a frog, a toad, a turd, <laughs> or whatever it was. single cell organism. Yeah, there you go. The theory of evolution. There is no God. The Big Bang Theory started all this Darwinism, Darwinism, garbage, lies. So read that again, Officer Leon. Thank Daniel you. Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. To wear out the saints of the Most High is like a pair of sneakers. What do you mean what, like a pair of sneakers? When you wear out sneakers, you know how you can look at the bottom of a sneaker and tell what, what brand it is? When you wear it out, it's all run down. You can't tell what brand it is. You don't know if it's Nike, Adidas, Converse, Pro Keds. I don't even know if they still got Pro Keds. They still got that sneaker? Damn. That was a sneaker when I was a kid. Damn. Nobody know what I'm talking about. So um, there was no name to it. So when you wear the sneaker over and over, it gets worn down so bad that you can't even identify the sneaker. So read that again, Officer Liam. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. They wore us out in slavery. Right, there's the sneakers. Yeah, there's the sneakers, for example. It's all worn out. Don't nobody want that. Ain't no damn good. That ain't worn out bad enough, but that's an example of worn out sneakers. So they wore us out in slavery so bad we we are unidentifiable. You know that there are records, I believe it was Jay Rogers, if I'm not mistaken. He said you wouldn't even know so-called African Americans um, were black if it was not for their complexion. He said because their mentality has been whitewashed. They think like chocolate-covered black people. Then you get mad why our people in Africa don't want you to come there. Because you bring all your filthy ways from here, there. You see it in, happen in Jamaica, Haiti, Trinidad. That you you So-called African-Americans. Yeah, Jude, I'm talking about you. You bring your Negropean ways <coughs> to other countries. Like that, for, give an example. It says talking at... Uh the slave port? No, I didn't see yep. it. Go ahead, talk on it. Did you see what just happened in Ghana? These sisters go at the, the, the place where there was a slave, and they disrespect all the ancestors. Twerking, twerking there like it's nothing. And you got oh. black women here defending them. They want to tell Mina Castle in Ghana? Yep. 
and do that. And you got black women here defended them. That's mm. what Bishop is talking about. Right. Hey, what about the sister that went to Saudi Arabia? She effed around and found out. <laughs> That's what I say. Hey, yeah, that, yeah, look, yeah, they said put it on the screen. You nasty. Some of you sisters are disgusting. Totally disgusting and reprobate. And then when nobody stand up for you, uh, we're the most unprotected women on earth. You deserve to be unprotected, you filthy scum of the earth. Damn. If the shoe fit, wear it. The hell is this? Ain't nobody got time for you. Now when you repent, sister, then, then, then we gonna look out for you. But until then, you can't make this stuff up. Twerking for the end, disgusting. Embarrassing. This is why the nations look down on us. Hey, look at the black woman. Filthiest woman of all nations. She's the worst. That's right, sister. I said it. Damn. If you're not keeping the commandments, you are the worst. Facts. Then they always write, right, go ahead, what do you say? You notice how the black men leaving, go to other country, find a wife, but nobody coming here to find a wife? You never notice that? What does that tell you? Go ahead, y'all can get mad. Send emails now, sister. Bishop said all black women are scum of the earth. I didn't say all black women are scum of the earth. I said if you ain't keeping the commandments and you like the, what we just saw, you are the scum of the earth. Oh, Bishop Carson. Oh, no, no, I'm telling you what God said. Give me that Ezekiel 28, you scum. <laughs> Bishop, that's not in the Bible. Wait, where is it at? Y'all got to help me out. Where is it at? Help me out. Help me out. Help me help you. 24. Yeah, and... Ezekiel what? 20, I have 24 and uh, 12. All right. Let me look at it. Let me look at it. Sisters, y'all get ready. Hold your wig, sis. Hold the wig. Yes. Let's read verse 12. Mm, no, it don't use the word I want. Am I in the wrong chapter? Ezekiel 24, Bishop. 24, 12. I'm in Ezekiel 24. I must be in the wrong book. Six. 24 and 6. Let me see. Okay, read 12. I like 12. Ezekiel 24 and verse 12. Yeah. She hath wearied herself with lies. You black women, you have wearied yourself with lies. Hey, hey, hey. Didn't a woman just lie and say she got kidnapped? She said, I saw a baby running on the highway. And I said, baby, where you going? And the baby read, ran the length of six football fields. What kind of baby could do that? You li put it on the screen. You lying, evil, unrepentant black women. Read it again. She have wearied herself with lies and her great scum went not forth out of her. You see that? Her great scum went forth. So I ain't cussing. God said that. Your scum has not been removed from you. Go ahead. Her scum shall be in the fire. Her scum shall be burnt up. You going to get judgment, sisters. You black women unrepentant, you are the scum of the earth. And God said he's going to burn you in fire. <laughs> Go ahead. In thy filthiness. In thy filthiness. Is lewdness. Is lewdness. Twerking with the ancestors. In yep, yep, yep. Elmina cast with a slave port. Twerking. Go ahead. Because I have purged thee, and thou was not purged. Thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon so thee. So God's going to call his, cause his fury to rest upon you. So right now, every black woman who takes no accountability is mad. Check the comments. She's mad right now. Uh, what is he saying? I can't believe him. This is evil. No accountability, sister. Like I said, if, if you repented, this ain't phasing you. But if you that evil scum of the earth, you mad right now. <laughs> All righty then. Let's go on back now to the topic. Deuteronomy 28. So the Bible says that this fourth kingdom, hey, some of you brothers in here listening right now, some of y'all, not all of you, some of you know your wife is scum, and you try to hide her. 
But it always comes out, brother. It always comes out. You can't hide scum. It stink. It's smelly. It's stinky. Like that one in Miami school walking around with a spandex dress talking about I'm modest, you nasty scum. I'm going to start using that word more often. Scum. Get mad. Where we at? Deuteronomy 28. Some of y'all married scum. <laughs> I hope that nigga choke and die. I just, I know what you're thinking. It's all right. I love you. I do love you. And I pray you repent. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15, please. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter... So now we're going here because it said the fourth kingdom would wear out the saints. Okay? Now we're giving some examples. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now if we don't keep the commandments, curses will come upon us. Jump down to verse 8. eight. Come on, y'all hit me up there. Verse 32. Verse gotta, 32. I need the, IT to flow with me. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So the sons and daughters were taken from us, taken to another, given to another people, another country, another state, another city. The mothers and fathers remain behind. And this is why it shocks me when I hear people say, there's no Israelites left behind. The Bible says the sons and daughters would be taken. Everybody, read it again. Did I misunderstand what it said? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with, with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Jump down to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore shall you serve your enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh -huh. In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. Mm -hmm. And in want of all things. Uh -huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So this yoke of iron is heavy. Now you know what's heavy about that. Because that verse right there ties into today's topic. Remember, the topic is they tried to use the Bible to destroy us. You might, some of you are right now going, how does that apply to verse 48? Read it again, Officer Leon. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. Meaning you got to serve your enemies for food. And in thirst. You got to serve your enemies for water. And in nakedness. You got to serve your enemies for clothing. And in want of all things. That part right there. That part right there. And for want of all things. Guess what, brothers, sisters? If you want to learn about God, guess who we had to go to? Enemies. The same enemy that enslaved us. The same enemy that colonized us. The same enemy that oppresses us from sunup to sundown. Now, now he's going to teach us about God. I'm going to teach you about the love of Jesus. And some of you brothers... And sisters have been deceived and fooled by your enemies. Can the same man that has destroyed your race, destroyed your ancestors, now teach you about the love of Jesus? You've got to be kidding me. I'm going to give you another example. During the time of slavery, they said what? From slavery on up, they said we were three-fifths of a man, right? We wasn't even considered men. We could not even at a time enter their churches. It wasn't until we were, uh, quote, unquote, emancipated. Then they started saying, uh, you can have your own church. You can follow what we teach. We still wasn't included with them. All the way up to the 60s, right? Civil rights. They said, okay, we might let a few of them, one or two in. Right. I am a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Now, all of a sudden, listen to what I'm about to say. Now, John 3.16 applies to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. So, wait a minute. Prior to that. That never applied to us, Mr. White Man. 
You wasn't telling the slaves God loved us and the world, we're the world and he, he loves us. No, you, you said we were less, we were beasts. We were savages. Salvation had nothing to do with us. Now, all of a sudden, God so loved the world. Nobody see the trick, trickery behind this? The blatant lies that these people pull. Right, Bishop, what they will do, they're going to say stuff like, use the scripture that talk about servants obey your master. You know, they're going to use stuff like that to keep us in that brain, brainwashed state. And not just that, they're going to put, they're going to choose who going to teach us the Bible. Okay, like they're going to choose the black pastor and make sure they only read certain scriptures and so forth to keep us in that slave way of thinking and to worship them and love them. Put that back on the screen, Yosef. They even went so far to create a slave Bible, a Negro Bible. Okay, British West India Islands, okay? And they took out all the parts of anything that re mentioned rebellion or revolution against the oppressor. They said, take that out of the Bible. And they gave us little key love scriptures. Okay, you can read these scriptures. Okay, yeah, that's the, that's the Negro slave Bible right there. That's what they did. Your friendly neighborhood white men, he did that. Why don't the Christian apologists talk about this? Oh, no, they're talking about Massa. We can't have them talking about Massa. Was there more to that, Joseph? All right. Back to ver Deuteronomy 28, Liam, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Oh, wait a minute. Officer, uh, Joseph, there was another uh, the child, the baby. Come on, y'all messing me up here. Verse 40 again, the bottom. Oh, verse 48. Read verse 41. I like 41. 20, leave that right there. Verse 41. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Look at this. This little young boy with a chain from his ankle on up to that piece of wood he had to keep on his head. Give me the next one, Officer Yosef. Now let's read the bottom. Can you zoom in on the bottom? Liam, this, you can read yeah, I'm using my, yes. this illustration is from a photograph which we received from the Reverend W.K. Farminger of the university's mission, Zanzibar. It represents a site not, not at all common. In not the at all uncommon. Sorry, not at all uncommon in the streets of the native quarters of Zanzibar. That's an island of Africa. Go ahead. Slaves who have run away and are recaptured are usually punished in the manner depicted. Of course we want to run away. They was abusing us. They was molesting us. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Right, somebody tell the Christian apologetics that. Then we running off the plantation. Shout out to Captain Gedaliah. We running off the damn plantation, and the Christians want to keep us on there. This young boy had sense. It doesn't even give his age. Really, obviously, I think he gave his age. The Read. little boy in the illustration was about seven years old. A seven-year-old black child had sense enough to run from the damn plantation. But the Christian black apologists ain't figured out of time to run. Time to leave Massa. They ain't figured out. A little seven-year-old got more sense than them. Go ahead, Leon. The little boy in this illustration was about seven years old and had carried the immense log, weighing over 32 pounds. 32 pounds on your head. Go ahead. And the heavy chain for over a year. For over a year. Wow. Mr. Firminger was afterwards able to procure the boy's freedom. Mm -hmm. Then he raped them. Look at that. Punishment of a boy slave in Zanzibar. Go back to the photograph. Go ahead. Listen, I'm telling you, y'all... Who back? Who talk? Who, who, who do love these people? Listen, I pray most I got kill you a horrible death. You see stuff like that? Stuff like that should get you mad because listen, especially if you got kids, stuff like that man should enrage you over a year. Think about it. Think, look at your seven-year-old kid today. Just think about it. Think about it for over a year. That's some evil stuff, man. And some of you still love these people to death. You should drop dead with them. Get the actual photographs of people know who just tuned in. This was an act. This is, uh, uh, Yosef, come on. Actual photograph, please. Right there. Thank you. 
That's the actual photograph that the illustration came from. This was real deal, okay? And no Christian church want to talk about it, but we going to talk about it. The hell is this? Give me, now this was in Zanzibar. Give me Zanzibar the map. This Africa on the side, Tanzania, you got Zanzibar right there, okay? In that red dot right there off the, off the east coast of Africa, okay? From there, give me the next picture of the slave ships. Give me the, do, verse 68 now, obviously, Leon. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, the word Egypt is Greek. Right. House of bondage is, is synonymous for bondage. Like when you read Exodus 20 and verse 2, it tells you that. So read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. At one time, the cargo with things like wine, uh, wheat, grains, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But now, there came a time when we became the cargo. Like you can see on the, the, in the center there. We became, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters became the cargo, as you can see right there. Okay, read again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Let's get, get give me the give me the kids on the ship now, and we again, obviously, Liam. And, and, there. and there, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So these were photographs of actual ships that had our sons and daughters on them. Actual photos of slaves, children on ships. So the Bible's a true book, and this is all documented, historical. This is why I like the actual photos, okay? Because you always got a Negro that just got out talking about, eh, slavery was fake. There was no, how come there ain't no pictures of a slave ship? Shut up, Negro. Go ahead. Hey, go back to that. Go back to that image with the kids, please. The other one. I like the other one because it was zoomed in. There's a, there we go. All right? So you see that one right there? Go back to the other one that you just... Went through? Okay. So you see kids here, right, brothers? Get Deuteronomy 28, verse 32 real quick. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. This is for the retarded ones, the retarded yeah. camps that have not progressed yet, and the water is still beneath the ankles. Damn. Okay, for them who say that <laughs> there are no Israelites in Africa. Okay, you know who you are. Go ahead, read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto what? Another people. Another race of people. Come on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Who's the eyes that shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long? The parents. So that means the kids were taken and brought forth where? Here. So what happened to the parents? They stayed back on the continent and produced more kids. Okay, so the Bible's the truth. We know what the hell we're talking about. There are Israelites in Africa. That's right. Leviticus 26, 17. The book of Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 17. And I will set my face against you. So this is what God said he would do to us for breaking his commandments. Read it again. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. You shall be slain before your enemies. Over a hundred million of our people died uh, just during the transatlantic, uh, what is it called? It just popped out of my head. The slave, when we went from the passage, the passage. Middle passage, middle passage, thank you. That's what popped out of my head. The, during the middle passage, over 100 million of us died. Okay. So read that again. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you. They that hate you. Shall reign over you. Shall rule over you. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Like that little boy, that seven-year-old boy ran. Ran for his life. He got caught. Okay. Now. Give me the image of the conquistadors, please. Right there, the conquistadors. They came from Spain and Portugal. 
And their ranks were filled, there are books that tell you their ranks were filled with so-called Jewish converts. Okay? They filled the ranks of the conquistadors. They came throughout the Americas, throughout the Caribbean. Okay, give me the next picture. It looks kind of red there. Y'all got a red picture. I know it was a little more brown than that. But they warred. The conquistadors warred against our people, the Aztecs. Okay? Now, people, you got some, as just, uh, just as dumb as some of our people say, there's no Israelites in Africa. <laughs> and it looked there on the bottom left. Can y'all zoom in on the bottom left from what I'm looking at? Right there with that priest, yeah. Right there, look at it, got the damn cross. Right. Let me baptize you in the name of the Father, uh, uh, el Padre Satanico, <laughs> however you say it. The damn Satan trying to baptize somebody. Give me that, that, that one right there. This goes with Leviticus 26. What we read, how they enslaved us. Those that hate you shall reign over you. Okay. Now many people, right, you see they go that damn cross again. Okay, they had them slaving. And a lot of our people, believe it or not, well, I won't say a lot. Well, mm, I'll use the word some. Some of our people, the so-called, what they call the so-called Indians, Aztecs uh, or Mexicans, um, Puerto Ricans, don't even, Dominicans don't even realize they were enslaved by Spain. They don't know their own history. Now, give me the next book. Right, look at it, he lynched us, lynched our people. Okay. Give me the next book. Read that, Officer Leon. Origins of the American Indians. Lee E. Hud Huddleston. Read that highlighted part. The Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Solomon Essar and of the family of Issachar. I didn't write this. The scholars said the Mexicans are the family of Issachar. Now, these are old writings from the conquistadors. Okay, these books we discovered way after we already had been teaching for decades. Now we find the books. And you got dumb black Hebrew Israelites. The Mexicans are not Israelites. Shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. Just be quiet. Right. Just be quiet. I ain't got time for you. Read that again. The Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Salmanessar and of the family of Issachar, whom the Indians recognize as their special ancestor. That's, that's, that's Bible right there. That's Bible right there. This is why we don't waste our time with dumb black people. Dumb black Hebrew Israel. We don't, we don't listen to you. Okay. Give me the next book. Next book, please. Yep, put it on the screen. Read that, Leon. America being the latest and most accurate description of the new world. Let's go inside the book. Zoom in. Yes, sir. The Portuguese. The Portuguese that dwelt on this island informed the Netherlanders that few lived above 50 years there. The air. And this particular island in Africa is making reference to. Go ahead. Yet, notwithstanding, the great gain tempted them to tarry several of them, having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. That John III, king of Portugal, sent a colony thither above two hundred years before, whom, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea, next Angola, and lastly on the island St. Thomas, that so they might be the better use the air, that the said king sold, sold all the Jews for sold slaves. Sold all those Jews for slaves. For slaves. Read that part again, that the said king. That the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused 
to embrace the Roman religion and cause their children to be baptized. So our people that refuse modern Christianity, they sold us as slaves and they forced our children to be baptized. And this was in the 1400s, okay? So this is why, so when you, we, we, I, we ain't nobody got time to argue with people talking about there's no bl uh, Israelites in Africa. Be quiet. You don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you how stupid people are. That's why, that's why, when you look at the white men, you, you know this, you think it's a coincidence the white man is pushing homosexuality in Africa? It's because they know we there. Listen, the war is not against the so-called African. The war is against us. It's against the Israelite. It's because they know we there. You think it's a coincidence? How come they didn't push it in the Arab? How come they didn't push it in the Chinese? Why Africa? Why they pick Africa? Because they know we there. You, some of you, listen, some of you so stupid, it's unbelievable. What you think the war is against? The war is against us. Jeez. You were going to say something, Lava? One, two, one, two, yeah. Go ahead, bring back the book. Because Bishop make a statement earlier. He see when they say the woman religion, they're showing you policy and religion is the same. They, they go together. That's right, the woman religion. Politics and religion go together. Okay, so from there, give me the next picture. Right there, lead out on the screen. Hey, Liam, give me Matthew 24, verse 4 and 5. Matthew yeah. mm -hmm. 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. These are the many. These priests, these Jesuit priests from the 1400s on up, these people are the many from Spain, Portugal, Rome. Then came the Dutch, okay? The English came later. All of these people came saying that they are Christ. And they had images of Christ. Give me the image they had. Hold it up. I mean, put it on the screen. Not that one. I want the original. That's the painting, which is fine. But I want the actual book. Nope. Come on, y'all. It's right there. In this book, The Pillory, zoom in at the bottom. I want the bottom text. Read that. The original of this bus was found in the church of San Salvatore and Termas now destroyed. It is an open secret. And that, that part, open secret, means only the white elites knew about it. It was open to their people. Read that again. It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. Let's look at it now. Bring it down. Salvatore is Spanish for savior. Salvatore is Spanish for savior. Lower it. Look at that. Caesar Borgia with the crown of thorns on his head. He posed as Jesus Christ. This is the image they took throughout the world. Give me the next page of the book. Zoom in at the bottom. So we're not making nothing up. Read that. Bust of the Savior posed for by Cesare Borgia. It was removed from the church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed, to the monumental morgue of St. Louis Church, where it, is, where it may still be seen and is shown by the guide as the bust of the relative of a famous pope. Yeah, the famous pope was Alexander, Pope Alexander VI of Rome. But this is his son, Caesar Borgia. He posed as the savior. So there's books on it. So it, it amazes me when people want to argue, Christians want to argue with us. No, you're making the shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Just be quiet. Give me Job 9.24. 
The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. This fourth beast, under whose dominion we now live, the Bible's calling this fourth beast, which is Rome, America, the wicked. The wicked. The wicked. Read it again, Liam. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They ruled the earth. We read that early in Revelation 17, 15. We read that in Daniel 7. Read it again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Mm -hmm. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. He covereth the faces of the judges. Now, the judges are God, Christ, the angels, and the Israelites. Those are the judges. Can I... This is how they cover the faces of the judges. In the background, you can see Christ black in the background. One of the rulers during the Middle Ages, black, far left. Give me the next painting, next photograph, I mean. This is how they cover the faces of the judges. All the black images that were throughout Europe, that's throughout Europe, they hire artists to, over to what do they call it, iconoclasms. Can you zoom in right there at the top? the top look at that you got Caesar Bourget as Jesus but top left look at top in the center I mean in the center you got black Mary and you see the black baby Jesus so what happened when the black baby grew up he became a, a, a Edomite he lost all his pigmentation are you kidding me his woolly textured hair turned he got a perm Stop it! Stop the blood clot lies, man! <laughs> the hell is this? You can't make this stuff up. Yes. All we watching there, Bishop, that, that took place when they was conquering us in Spain. So all of this right here is when they start, when they start brain teaching lies on the earth and speaking blasphemy. Exactly. From there, give me Psalms 50. Question may be, well, the question often comes up, why do you use the Bible? It was used to enslave us. Psalm 50. Let's start at verse 16, Leon. Psalm 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked. But, 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 unto who? The wicked. We already read Job 9, 24, which said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. In the book of Ezra, 2 Ezra, chapter 11, didn't it say... About the fourth beast, thou art he who I made to reign in my world. So read it again, Liam. Psalm 50, 16. But unto the wicked. And it said, oh, I'm sorry. What I wanted in Second Ezra, it said, they reign with much wicked, wicked. oppression. That's what I, poop. Read that again, Liam. Unto the wicked, he, but unto the wicked, God saith. Who saith? God saith. God said, this ain't me. This is what God says. Go ahead. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Why are you teaching my Bible? Why are you reading from my records? That's what God is saying to the white man. Because they're the wicked the Bible speaks of. No. Not yet. I don't want that yet. Read. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Or that, that you got the white... Hey, put so-called Amalek. Not so-called Amalek. Amalek. Put Amalek on the screen. I need them red demons on the screen. Oh, what the hell is he doing to the wall? What the hell is he doing to the wall? Get off the wall! <laughs> Give me another picture of the demons. The hell is this? They call this davening. So, Leon, read that part again. But unto the wicked God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Because they love to teach the Bible. Or that thou oh, they call it the Hebrew scriptures. Go ahead. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. There are two covenants, remember. You have the old covenant that they took hold on, and they say, Anya Yehudi, I will teach you the covenants. This is what they do. They took the covenant, the old covenant in their mouth. But then you got another group. Hey, put me up. Uh, what's the fat guy in Texas? Uh, Hagee. John Hagee. John Hagee, uh, Jimmy Swaggart. Um, give me some more Edomites. Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. 
Billy Graham, he dead now. He did. The devil. Kenneth Copeland. The devil. Yeah, that's John Hagee. Give me another one. That's John Hagee, very famous in, in, in Texas. Come on, put it on the screen. This is Joel Osteen, always crying. These guys are filthy. But give me Kenneth Copeland, too. Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. K-E-N-N-E-T-H. Kenneth. Kenneth Copeland. C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D. Yeah, that's him. Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. That one right there. Hey, 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 give me uh, uh, Pope. The Pope of Pope Francis. Pope Francis. How could I forget him? Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Yeah, that's him right there. So read that again, Officer Liam. You know what I want? That one line. Or that. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. There were two covenants. The old covenant, which so-called Jewish people took hold of. Then you got so-called, these so-called Christians took hold of the new covenant. God says, what would have you to do to declare my statutes? Or that you should take my covenant in your mouth? Put it on the screen, y'all. Come on, just put it on the screen. Okay. Read it again, the whole verse again, Leon. But unto the wicked, God saith. They are the wicked. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hast hatest instruction. Seeing thou hatest instruction. The God's law says, thou shalt not make unto thee any idols or images to bow down and serve them. On the new, uh, the new covenant, they go, no, we, we, we don't have to obey that. We can make images and bow and kiss baby Jesus. That's what that's supposed to be, by the way, baby Jesus. Blasphemy. Okay. Read it again, Leon. Seeing thou hatest instruction. They hate instructions. Like the law says, thou shalt not steal. Was America stolen? Yes, sir. Was Australia stolen? Yes, sir. Was South Africa stolen? Yes, sir. They, they do not keep God's covenants. Go ahead. Bishop, they stole every land on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What verse you at, Leon? Still at verse 17. Go ahead. Seeing thou hatest instruction... And cast this my words behind thee. Because right, they do not obey what is written in the book. In our book. Go ahead. When thou sawest a thief. When you saw a thief. Then thou content, consentest with him. That's how America became so populated with them, with their people. And uh, has, What they call it, land, uh, when they had their people come and they paid them $500 each to take a partial, part, partial of land. Damn, land appropriation, something like that. But they did that. Okay, they had the Polish people come, Czechoslovakia, even when they stole Israel. They had people from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Russia, Germany. Say, come get a piece of, they stole every land. The British took Australia. The damn Dutch took uh, South Africa. Then the British came behind them. They stole, steal, steal, and destroy. Lava, what you got? Yeah, you remember after they give him land, they give him money too, Bishop. They give him a lot of money. Yep. Read that again, Officer Liam. Seest thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. When thou sowest a thief, then thou consentest with him. You want to steal some land? Go ahead and get yours on. Go ahead. And has been partaker with adulterers. Yeah, because when they was raping our women, our mothers and fathers, mother, yeah, fathers too, but <laughs> Damn. raping our mothers and aunts and sisters and daughters. They agreed with that thing. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. And thy tongue frameth deceit. And if tongue frame lie after lie. After they destroyed us, they said, now we're going to teach you about the love of Jesus. Isaiah 29, 13, please. So now we'll show you what the white man has done once they that fourth kingdom came into power. How they decimated us. They burned and tore our records up. Okay, that's what they did. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. Meaning we say, oh, I love God. Show me the black woman in church. I love God. I love Jesus. Just show me the black church. This is them. Put on. I need that picture on the screen. Just find me one. 
Find me one with a, you know, the, 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 the loud mouth black woman. Come on, y'all. Help me out. I want a front view. I, I don't like the back view. I want to see the front. She might have a sandwich. <laughs> Come on, IT. I just want to, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Hopefully it's uh, high res. Go ahead, put, zoom in. You can zoom, big, make it bigger. Okay, Liam, read it again. Wherefore, the Lord and said. And notice, it's majority women. Look at the bottom right. Do y'all see her face? You see how she just looked mad for no reason. <laughs> Well, she got to read her man probably left or cheated on her or something. She don't, she could, she want to eat lobster and scrimp. Scrimp. Read that, Officer Liam. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. I love Jesus. Jesus on the main line. That's what they do. And with, and with their lips do honor look me. Look at that woman with the, look at it with the mouth all open, the hand up to Jesus. They're, when they singing these gospel songs, because some of y'all probably be listening to these gospel songs, them gospel songs of the devil. Those gospel songs, they're singing to Caesar Borges. Those gospel songs are about democracy, modern day Christianity. That's what their gospel songs are all about. They're about unity of all races coming together. There's no song about revolution about us being free from oppression, free from captivity, being returned to our homeland, ruling the earth. There's no Christian songs about that. And these people here, I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. Liam, read it again. Let me get back on topic. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. What does that mean? It means they won't do one law. The Bible says they don't keep no law. That's and, what it means. And their fear toward me. And their fear, their fear toward me, their fear toward God is taught by the precept of men. Now you got who taught them? The white man. Right. right. The white man taught them how to fear God. Understand from the time of slavery, the slave emancipation. The white man taught us everything our people know about God, everything our people know about Jesus, everything our people know about salvation. The white man taught us this foolishness. Them old country bumpkins, pork-eating, scrimps, saliv salivating people. Look at this. That's like Darwin and humping it on the wood. The hell is this? Right. And you know what proves that? Deuteronomy 28 and 48. It says, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies for the wants of, want of all things, meaning education. You need to learn about God. You got to learn that from your enemy. And he's going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed, destroyed you. So now we're in the land of our captivity. We were taught about God by our slave master. All right? And the, the, the precepts that he taught us is wrong. What he taught us is wrong. That's what we're reading right now. Exactly. Uh, Colossians 2 and 8 now. Put that on the screen. The next to pick the religions. Put on the screen. Colossians 2 and 8. Over to Leon. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware. Lest any man spoil you, you through philosophy. Beware, brothers and sisters. The Lord warned us. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. And vain deceit, meaning lies. After the tradition of men. What men? After the tradition of white men. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. So you got people like Friedrich Schlickermacher. The father of hermeneutics that these dumb, stupid, black apologists. Oh, uh, you're not using proper hermeneutics. To hell with your hermeneutics. It ain't biblical. The Lord ain't dealing with your white master. Then you got the Baptist religion. Started by John Smith. 
Okay. What year is that? You know, can't see. 1608. 1608. Where was we in 1608? Slavery. Slavery! John 316 didn't apply to us then. But now all of a sudden it applies. Are y'all kidding me? You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool the Son of God. That's right. That's right. I said I made it up. That's how it go from now on. Sons of God. The sons of God. That's right. The next dude, you got uh, 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 Joseph Smith. He created the Mormon. Can somebody call Gladys Knight? Because she is the head choir master with the Mormon religion. Can Damn. somebody give Gladys a call? I love Gladys Knight. Don't get me wrong. But she's doomed if she don't come out of that, my people. Then you got the next guy. Some of you niggas, especially you West Indians, yo, yo, be yo. loving the damn Seventh-day Adventists. Hey, I don't know look, what's wrong. Right. And you notice they think they're the most smartest people on earth. Yeah, Bishop, you know I used to be a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, you used to be a Seventh-day Adventist? Yeah, yeah. I, I went to the school and all of that. Yeah? Oh, God. <laughs> You got on the radio with a seven-day adventure. He asked you a question. Then he wouldn't even let you answer the question and then hung the, hung the radio up. Boop! Yep. You can't make this stuff up. Started by William Miller. And it was one of his right-hand hoes, that's right, I said hoes, Ellen G. White. They praise her like she's God. Ellen G. White, the prophetess said, Ellen G. To hell with Ellen G. She hated you niggas. In fact, all these demons here hated you Negroes. And you Latinos too, don't they? Well, me no Negro. Shut the hell up. <laughs> the, the, yeah, that's Gladys Knight. Yep, head of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Somebody give Gladys a call. Send her a flyer. Some of you sisters might know Gladys Knight. Come out of your feelings. They still mad because I said that if they didn't repent, they'd the scum of the earth. You, well, that's what God said. Yeah, put that hole on it. Put this hole. That's the hole I'm talking about. Yeah, put it back. What? Yeah, that's the bottom hole right there. That's the bottom hole. L and G Y, who hated all you black folks. Oh, I gotta clear up something. Can y'all get? Can y'all? I'm sorry. Now this has nothing to do with the topic. I'm just sidebarring for a second. Can y'all find me a picture of Shaharazad Ali? I got to say this, sister, because I got an email, and it really annoyed me. <coughs> Come on. Now, this is off topic. This is off topic, what I'm about to say. Shaharazad. Now, I don't know how to spell that name. Okay. Now, last week, I spoke about our beloved sister, Shaharazad Ali. And I said, we loved Shaharazad Ali for the things she said correcting black women. Y'all familiar with that? Y'all remember that last week? Yes, sir. I said, black women hated Shaharazad Ali, called all out of name and all that, called the high yellow. I get an email from a sister, dear Bishop Nathaniel. I was so happy when you brought out how there are many sisters who have uh, helped in the struggle. However, me and my unbelieving husband took offense when you called Shaharazad Ali out of her name. When you called her a high yellow nigga. I didn't call Shaharazad Ali a high yellow nigga. I said, the black woman who hated her was calling her out of her name, calling her high yellow nigga. Nigga. <laughs> I can't say that. Some of you sisters, you hear things and you want to manipulate the, uh, 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 what, you what we say, like, uh, I get another email about patient saints taught women to beat their child with an extension cord. I said, patient saints never taught that. They might have gave an example of when they was young, they got, I got beat with extension cord. Ain't nobody teaching today. Go out and beat your kid with it. You black, some of you, especially you single ones, shut the hell up. You single and you gonna, you deserve to stay single. Because you're just, just out of pocket with some of y'all. Oh, God. Hey, hey, check the comments. Tell me if there's some evil black scum on there running their mouth so I could cuss them out. Uh, all right. 
Yo, you could, I had a bad night's sleep. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Woosah. Okay. You could take our beloved sister off the screen. Put them devils back up now. Don't be twisting our words. You damn Christians always do that. But yeah, put them demons back up. So, uh, Officer Liam, read the verse again. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You got Charles T. Russell, who created the Jehovah Witness religion in 1872. Okay? We just got emancipated a little few years before that. After him, you got, uh, what's that dude named? Charles Parham. In what year is that? I can't see. 1901. 1901. And you Negroes have gone crazy in their philosophies and vain deceit. Your slave master that raped, robbed, and murdered, and destroyed you, who have hated you, disdained you, loathed, loathed, L-O-A-T-H-E-D, you. Now they're teaching you about, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If he treated you wrong, he taught you wrong. That's right. I don't see why they can't figure that out. Lord have mercy. Give me Galatians 1, 6, and 7. Now, the book of Galatians, Paul was getting on those religious scribes and Pharisees. They made them sick. But the same thing those religious scribes and Pharisees were doing, these Christians, especially these Edomite ones, these white ones, have done today. Galatians 1, verse 6 and 7. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that you are so, so excuse me, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Some of you brothers, some of you sisters have been removed from Christ unto another gospel. You in a right, see, during the time of Paul, they went back to animal sacrifice, the old covenant. But today, there's no animal sacrifice, there's no old covenant going on. So what's this talk, how do we bring this up to today? Our people are learning the truth that they're the Israelites. They must keep the laws in Christ under the new covenant. What did they do? They said, no, 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 we're going to go under white Jesus. We're going back to white Jesus and keep no law. That's what they'll read it again. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So today that another gospel is modern day Christianity. That's right. Go ahead. Which is not another. Why does it say which is not another? Because we're all using the same book. The difference is the white man's doctrine has twisted the words of the book. Read that again at verse 7. Which is not another. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. There be some that trouble you. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. Put them devils back up on the screen. Read that again, Liam. Which is not another. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you. Uh-huh. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. These are some of the men that have perverted the gospel of Christ. Mm. These are just some of their images, okay? Today, you got black men and black women who follow behind them. Like, give me, come on, T.D. Jakes. Y'all know some of these people? Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar. Pastor Todd, he be spitting on Negroes. Well, no, no, I, I wouldn't, yeah, this guy, I wouldn't put this, the, go back to the other image, I got to say this. I got to clear this up. That's Fred Price, but his son today does teach that we, we are the Israelites, so I'm a, I'll leave him alone. So go to the next one. What's this dude's name? Todd, no, not Todd. Tony Evans, thank you. This is another gospel that he teaches. He loves white folks and they hate his guts. Give me the next one. Creflo Dollar, he teaches another gospel. My, uh, white Jesus, hail white, seek hail white Jesus. Money, 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 money. Give me the next one. Uh, Eddie Long, same thing. Well, he did now, he did. Give me the next one. Todd Smith, he be uh, spitting on folks, taking, he be them. what do you call that when it come from deep in your chest? The loogies, oh God, Lord. A loogie, rubbing it on Negroes' faces. Now, that's some old, I got to say it. That's some homo stuff right there. I, I, I. 
Do I want to say that? Mm. The only time when you bring spit up like that I've seen in the past, in the past, not today, in the past, you know, when doing those porn things and they go, and they spit, and they use that as lube. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But he did this to this brother's face. That's, they do that inside of me. Pause. Homosexuality, I'm sorry if I offended people. I apologize. That's just nasty. That's just nasty. Come on, y'all. Yeah, it was on his face. Uh, this brother's, what's his brother's? Uh, T.D. Jakes, I'm preaching another gospel. Hell, white Jesus. Why Jesus will save you? Give me one need. Give me one some black women. You women are not absolved from this. Juanita Bynum. She's the only black. Is there another fat black female that be preaching out there? I can't. Oh, Shirley Caesar. That's right. How could I forget her? Oh, yeah, the Winans. Uh, CC Winan. A-I-T. Come on, y'all over there. Not Kiki Palmer. Yeah, that's Juanita Bynum. Another gospel. Give me uh, uh, Caesar, Shirley Caesar. Shirley, Sister Shirley Caesar. Come on, Shirley. Greens, tomatoes, potatoes. She got some song. How I go? Greens, beans, potatoes, malaria, something like that. You're right. Come on, y'all. That's Shirley Caesar preaching another Jesus. Why Jesus seek Heil? And you know the irony behind a lot of them? They grew up in the South. They saw lynchings. But now they come with this love everybody stuff. C.C. Wine, I think that's another gospel. Caesar Borgia is Jesus. Okay. Read that again, Officer Leon. Which is not another. Read over verse. Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. Would pervert the gospel of Christ. Let me give you an example. Here's an example. Ephesians 6, 5, and 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. See that? Servants, be obedient unto them that are your masters. Go ahead. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. What verse you at? That, that's still verse 5. Go ahead. With fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. In singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Mm -hmm. As unto Christ. What verse you at? That's verse 5. Go ahead. Not with eye service. Not with eye service. As men pleases. As men pleases. But as the servants of Christ, mm -hmm. doing the will of God from the heart. So they use those verses like that, and there's a few others, where they say this justifies slavery. I'm going to give you the proper precepts to what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Get me Leviticus 25. We're going to read 39 to 43. Write this down. Leviticus chapter 20. Wait, wait. Write this down. Leviticus 25. Go ahead, verse 39. The Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 39. Mm -hmm. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor. You want to stress that. If thy brother, thy brother, brother, brother be waxen poor. Go ahead. And be sold unto thee. And be sold unto thee. Well, how so? Because he could not obviously feed himself, take care of himself. So now you buy him and you are what? Taking care of him. He's working for you. It's going to explain all that. Read it again. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. He is not to be a bond servant. Okay, guys. So there's a difference between a hired servant and a bond servant. Bond as in bondage. Go ahead. But as a hired servant. See that he's a hired. 
guess what? Everybody in here who work for Esau are hired servants. Everybody understand that? Civil servants. Right. Go ahead. But as a hired servant and as a sojourner, mm -hmm. he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. That's every 50 years. Go ahead. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his father shall he return. This type of was also going on on the continent of Africa. People love to jump and say, Africans had slaves too. Not the slavery that white man put on us in chattel slavery. Oh, that's two different things. But they try to blur the line. That's what they try to do. Go ahead. For they are my servants, mm -hmm. which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Go ahead. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor. Did the white man rule over us with rigor? Yes. Yes. Can we look up that word rigor? Mm. How'd they treat the nigger with rigor? Damn. That's what they did. Hey, ASAP, I got bars. That's bars. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt, T-shirt. Read that. Rigor. The quality of being extremely thorough, exhaustive or accurate, severity or strictness. Severity or strictness. Go ahead. Demanding difficult or extreme conditions. Extreme conditions. De difficult. Y'all see that? Okay, was that it? Where is it? Okay, uh, uh, okay go back. So read that again, verse 43. Uh, at Leviticus chapter 25, verse 43. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, mm -hmm. but I, shall fear thy God. Right. So we were not allowed to rule over our brothers and sisters with rigor. That's what the Apostle Paul was talking about. And go back to Ephesians now. Ephesians yes. chapter 5. And five. make sure you write that in your Bibles, because we tend to you be at, on the street, and there's always a dumb Negro who thinks he or she is just so clever because they heard the white man say something because the white man wants to get rid of your records. He says, oh, white pe this is what white folks do. White folks will reveal how they manipulated and twisted, perverted Ephesians 6, verse 5 and 6. So therefore, we should get rid of the Bible. Their ulterior motive is so that you never wake up. Right. Read that again, Liam. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 5. Servants... Be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling mm -hmm. and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Mm -hmm. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Right. Now, another example is, um, we're not going to read it today, but I'll just tell you. In the book of Philemon, there was a servant named Onesimus, if I'm not mistaken. He ran from his master, and Paul sent him back. Be careful when these white folks try to pull these scriptures out. Yeah. Remember Leviticus 25, 39 to 43. That's what it's talking about. Everybody with me so far? Yes, All right. Hey, uh, IT, give me uh, the King Leopold records. This is during the Belgian conference. Officer Liam, can you read that for me? Yes, sir. Let, letter from King Leopold II of Belgium to colonial missionaries in 1883. Reverends, fathers, and dear compatriots, the tax that is given to fulfill is very delicate and requires much tact. You will go certainly to evangelize. So this is when they were sending ministers, Jesuit priests, to the continent of Africa. Go ahead. But your ev evangelization must inspire above all Belgium interests. Your principal objective in our mission in the Congo is never to teach the niggas to know God. See that? Christian's objective is never to teach Christians to know God. Can somebody tell the Christian black urban apologetics that? You dumb, stupid niggas. Damn. Go ahead. Your principal, obje your principal objective in our mission in the Congo is, to ne is never to teach the niggers to know God. This they know already. They speak and submit to a mungu, one Namzi or 
Nakomba, and what else I don't know. They know that to kill, to sleep with someone else's wife, to lie, and to insult is bad. Have courage to admit it. So now we're going to touch on that, how they know that is bad. We're going to show you that in a few minutes. But mm. go ahead. Have courage to admit it. You are not going to teach them what they know already. Your essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrials, which means you will go to interpret the gospel in the way it will be the best to protect your interests in that part of the world. In other words, pervert the gospel. Right. That's what he's saying. When it says uh, you will go to interpret the gospel, means pervert the gospel. That's what Christ this is going to explain Christianity to a T. Go ahead. For these things, you have to keep watch on disinteresting, disinteresting our savages from the richness that is plenty in their underground. To avoid that, they get interested in it and make your murderous competition and dream one day to overthrow you. Your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find text ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty. See that? They look for scriptures for them to love poverty. Like, happier are the poor because they will inherit the heaven. That's Matthew chapter 5 from the Beatitudes. And it's very difficult for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. Right. You have to detach. So they had them pervert those scriptures. Go ahead. Mm. You have to detach from them and make them disrespect everything which gives courage to affront us. I make reference to their, mystics, their mystic system and their war fetish, warfare protection, which they pretend not to want to abandon. And you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. Your actions... Take the fight out of a nigga so that they will never rise, there will never be a revolution, they will not rebel. That's what Christianity... That's why you got all the effeminate men in the black... Christian church. Go ahead. Your action will be directed essentially to the younger ones, for they won't, re for they won't revolt when the recommendation of the priest is contradictory to their parents' teaching. The children have to learn to obey what the missionary recommends, who is the father of their soul. See, they go after the children. Go ahead. You, yeah, you, you remember what we talked about earlier? They're showing the religion, we place the chain. The chain, and the, uh, there, is, there we move there, they give you religion. You must singularly insist on their total submission and obedience. Avoid developing the spirit in the schools. Teach students to read and not to reason. Wow, wow, wow. Learn to read, but not to reason. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. There, there, dear patriots, are some of the principles that you must apply. You will find many other books. I'm going to give an example. For God so loved the world. Right. Then you read Romans 9, 13. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. They'll re they can read it, but they have not learned to figure the reasoning that what you've been taught, John 3, 16, means, cannot mean that when you look at Romans 9, 13. Right. You ever understand that? can't comprehend. Somebody help the Christian apologetics with their hermeneutics bull crap? Go ahead. There, dear patriots, are some of the principles that you must apply. You will find many other books which will be given to you at the end of this conference. Evangelize the niggers so that they stay forever in submission to the white colonialists. So they never revolt against the restraints that are un undergoing. Recite every day Happy are those who are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. Again, that's Matthew 5. Go ahead, raise it up. Convert always the blacks by using the whip. Keep their women in nine months of submission to work freely for us. Force them to pay you in sign of recognition goats, chickens, or eggs every time you visit their villages. And make sure that niggas never become rich. Sing every day. That's why you see Africa the way it is. Right. Sing every day that it's impossible for the rich to enter heaven. Make them pay tax each week at Sunday Mass. That's the tithes. 10% of your tithes. Damn. That's where it came from, right there. The white man has perverted the gospel. Go ahead. Use the money supposed for the poor to build flourishing businesses, uh, centers. Institute a confessional system. 
which allows you to be good detectives, denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of the, de of the decision maker. Meaning the pastor. Teach the niggas. <laughs> Use that where you say tax them, collect that money to open businesses. The pastors today, that money, you see, okay, for example, TGJ for dollar. These guys worth million. Guess what they do with that money? They took it to the white man bank. That's the same thing. The white man took that money. That same money they took from the poor black folks. The white men make more million with it. And the white men don't put it back in the black community. The white men put it in their community. That's the same thing. Uh, read it again, Neom, what yeah. you just read when they're talking about conscience. Yes, sir. Institute a confessional system mm -hmm. which allows you to be good detectives denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of the, the decision maker. What they're teaching you is going to go against your conscience. Mm. You hardly can see what's good or evil is. Whatever they teach you good and evil is, that's what you're going to believe. <laughs> hey, real quick. Y'all remember James 5.16 when it says confess your faults one to another? Meaning if I got a problem with Malachi, I got to speak to him. It's going back to Matthew 18. That's all it is. What Esau did, they create a confessional booth in the Catholic Church where you got to tell everything you know about yourself and or the community of what's going on. So when you go back to that letter now, go back to the letter, read that part again about use the money. Uh, Institute a confession, that one? You, no. Use the money, suppose for the poor, uh -huh. to build flourishing business centers. Institute a confessional system. That's it, institute a confessional system They've got that from James 5, 16, confess your faults. Go ahead. Right, that's it right there. Going back, go ahead. Which allows you to be good detectives. Of course you could be a good detective because you telling me or the priest everything that's going on. Mm. Go ahead. Denouncing any black. That's how they knew if there was a slave rebellion. That's how they found out. Go ahead. Denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of the decision maker. Teach the niggas to forget their heroes and to adore only ours. Yep, George Washington, Christopher Columbus, our people adore them things, okay? Then they give you white Jesus. Only adore their heroes. Like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Spider Aquaman. Adore their heroes. Wonder Woman. <laughs> Never present a chair to a black that comes to visit you. Don't give him more than one cigarette. Never invite him for dinner, even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive at his house. You see that? <laughs> now y'all online, y'all be inviting them to dinner. They don't invite you to dinner. Go ahead. The above speech, which shows the real intention of the Christian missionary journey in Africa, was, ex was exposed to the world by Mr. Mukwani Mukwani Bukoko, born in the Congo in 1915, and who in 1935, while working in the Congo, bought a secondhand Bible from a Belgian priest who forgot the speech in the Bible, Dr. Chiodos Okoro. We should note, one, that all missionaries... And you know what this shows? That they have secret councils. They didn't even, they don't allow, that me, that was in a letter to each other. White folks, that wasn't for us to get, he found that letter by, the Lord had him find that letter. So then I'm gonna reveal something to you. Go ahead. We should know that all missionaries carried out and still carry out that mandate. We are only lucky to have found King Leopold's articulation of the aim of all Christian imperialist missionaries to Africa. Even the African converts who today manage the older churches in Africa, the priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, etc., of the Roman and Protestant sects, and especially also those who evangelize born-again Christianity, still serve the same mandate, which is why 
they demonize African gods and, and, and angelicalize African names. Oh, sorry, anglicize African names and drop the names of African deities which form part of African names and still attack and demolish the African shrines that have managed to survive. There you go right there. There you go. Damn. That they hire our own people to do it. Okay. Was there more in that letter? Was there more? This yes, it? Sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Read that. Number three. Those Africans who voluntarily converted to Christianity before the colonial con conquest, such as Afonso I of the Ba Congo in the 15th century, probably did not discern the purpose of the brand of Christianity that was supplied to them which was probably why they fell easy prey to the missionaries and the white traders and pirates who followed them. But okay, that's all I wanted out of there. From there, give me the next book. Next book, next book. I want the next book that I sent you. Next book. Come on, y'all. Atlas Geographus, or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa, containing what is most used in Blee, Vernus. I can't pronounce that. It's on the book. 1714. Okay. So now zoom in. I need you to zoom in. This book was written in 1714. Can y'all get it bigger than that? Leo says. Yes, sir. Leo says there are other kingdoms on the south frontiers of this country. Talking about Africa. Which are inhabited by a rich, industrious, and just sort of people. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time. They never taught you that in school. Read that again. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time and succeeded by Christianity. But Mohammedism prevailed in the 208th year of the Hijri when all the Jews, Christians, and professors of the African religion that could be found were put to death. See that? They put many of us to death. Go ahead. Yet in process of time, their intestine, intestine quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law mm -hmm. and revolt from the caliph of Baghdad. So how many of our people started to revolt against the Arabs? Islam, go ahead. For which they were se severely punished by the Mohammedan caliphs, who caused all their books to be burnt. Who caused all their books to be burnt. Hey, go back to uh, 1 Maccabees 156. The same thing the Greeks did, the Arabs did too. Now they teach us that in Africa we had no books, no records. That's a lie. These old books are saying we, they had records and they burnt them up. First Maccabees 156, and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, put the picture up. They burnt them with fire. They burnt our books with fire. Now let's go back to the uh, book again, the other book. <coughs> Read that again, Leon. Yet in process of time. Wait, where you at? I'm sorry. Okay, uh -huh. I see it. I see it. Go ahead. Yet in process of time, their intestine quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law and revolt from the caliph of Baghdad, for which they were severely punished by the Muhammadan caliphs who caused all their books to be burnt on suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and sciences prompted them to condemn, condemn Muhammad's law. Right. Muhammad's law. So... They knew our records, if they let us keep our books, it would return us or have us go against Islam. That's why they burnt up all our records. Read that. Those of upper Ethiopia worshipped the Lord of heaven before the Queen of Sheba went to Solomon to be instructed in the law of Moses, Moses and the prophets. When they embraced Judaism as did all, also some of the inhabitants of lower Ethiopia who continued in it till they were taught Christianity by the queen of Candace's eunuch who was baptized by Philip. 
Read that section. Some of the Jews who inhabit both sides of the Niger derived themselves from Abraham. Others fled hither. So it's telling you that what people call the Africans today, or Negroes, it's calling them Jews. Read that again. Some of the Jews who inhabit both sides of the Niger derived themselves from Abraham. Others fled hither from Asia when Vespasian destroyed Jerusalem. So it's letting you know some of them Jews, those black Jews, went into Africa fleeing the destruction of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Or from Judea mm -hmm. when twas when twas wa uh, wasted. Uh, wasted by the Romans, mm -hmm. Persians, Sarsians, and Christians. Some were banished from Italy in 1342, mm -hmm. from Spain in 1462, from the Low Countries. Low in Countries is the Netherlands. They call it Netherlands, the Low Countries. Go from ahead. the Low Countries in 1350, from France in 1403, and from England in 1422. These. Mm. These all defer. Thank you. These all defer in Habir. Inhabit. And ha so inhabit and are divided into several wealthy and numerous tribes, but have no dominion and despised of all nations. So everybody hated our people, the Jews that was throughout Africa. Everybody see that? Now, I didn't write this book. I didn't make it up. This is what their so-called scholars put together. Okay? Give me the next book, please. I mean, next page. Mm -hmm. Watch what this boss say. I like this. Have me laughing. <laughs> they are so fond of their own black complexion and so much abhor a white one. Damn! <laughs> that in contempt, they paint the devil white. Wow. They're never going to teach you that in Sunday school. <laughs> that just make my teeth white. That's all I wanted out of that. Hey, Give me uh, Psalms 106, verse 30. No, I didn't write the book. White, men, white folks wrote the book. That's what they found throughout Africa. Psalms 106, verse 35, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. But were mingled among the heathen. Read the verse above it. Yes, sir. Psalm 106, verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. See that part? But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Not only is that true, as we have been scattered in America, Europe, India, it also occurred during the time of Africa with the Hamitic uh, nations, the Hamitic tribes, or Nilotic tribes, as like the Philistines, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Give me the next book. Mm -hmm. Read that, Leon. Yes, sir. Cambridge Library Collection. West African countries and peoples, British and native. And the vind vindication of the African race. James Africanus Beale Horton. Let's go Cambridge. inside the book. Now, this was published in 1868. This is just a few years after emancipation. Zoom in. Yeah, I can't see. Okay. The ten tribes of Israel, after they were left to follow the dictates of their own mind and during the commotion and destructive warfare which ensued to escape utter extermination, migrated according to the usage of the times in vast numbers into various countries. And, and, and guess what? One of those vast countries was America. Go ahead. But principally into North America. Northern Africa. And it's letting you know some came to Northern Africa. Go ahead. As it then presented the safest and easiest route. Once settled, every commotion and intestine war had the most powerful effect of inducing these migratory bands to shift their abode still further. They went further, deeper into Africa. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. And so lose all connection with the other branch of the tribe. So we started to lose connection with the other of our people from the tribes of Israel, go ahead. As hundreds of years pass on. Notice that, as hundreds of years pass on. And generation after generation roll away. Watch this. They lose a great many of their habits and customs. Y'all see that? As hundreds of years pass on and generations after generation roll away, they lose a great many of their habits and customs. Go ahead. 
becoming more amalgamated meaning mixed with the population with which they associate y'all see that that's what psalms 106 verse 35 was saying being mingled among the inhabitants and learn their works read but when muhammadism overspread northern africa destroying by fire and sword all those was there a next page of another of another religion mm -hmm. the israelitish descendants now why i say israelitish descendants because we started to lose connection with what we were keeping god's laws remember the other book it said the religion of africa was what judaism judaism go ahead or the inhabitants to me the israelitish descendants or the inhabitants occupying the central portion of africa passed forward seeking shelter to the south south africa and west and that's ghana he part namely those from the east central that's ethiopia over there crossing the benu mm -hmm. or joliba branch of the niger descended gradually southward and became intermingled with the original inhabitants you see that we became intermingled with the original inhabitants that's what Psalms 106 verse 35 was saying. Go ahead. Protected from incursion on the north by the Beni River and quietly settled between the Great Niger and Old Calabar Rivers. They remained in peace and grew from one generation to another in idolatry. In idolatry. Go ahead. But still leaving tangible proofs in the form of their religion, of the Judaistic origin of the inhabitants. He said there were still tangible proofs that these were the Jews. That's what it is. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. All praises. Give me Hosea 8 and 12 now. Let's go back to the Bible. So these books are good, but always remember the Bible is the main source of information. Everybody always remember that. Okay? Hosea 8 and 12. So now Hosea. what has happened? Hosea. As we've gone into captivity and the word of God has been perverted, by our slave masters, watch. You try to bring out the truth of the Bible, watch what happens. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. Y'all see that? Now the Bible is strange to our people. They go, that ain't in the Bible. What book you reading? Because they've never been taught the truth of what the Bible is saying. From there, Isaiah 29 and 15. Isaiah 29 and 15. Come Isaiah on. chapter 20, Isaiah 29 and verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? You know, an example of that is what we just read with King Leopold's letters. Right. They had a meeting that black people was not included in about how and what to teach us. Okay. These what counsels? Read that again, verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Read. Surely a turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So they turn the word of God upside down, okay? Everything is topsy-turvy when you listen to Christianity. It's all Christianity is wrong, wrong, wrong. Read it again. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Good. God of the Bible didn't make me. Go ahead. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, uh -huh. he had no understanding? Right. It is not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. And the fruitful field wait, shall... Wait, wait, wait. You know what I forgot? Hey, put that on the screen, uh, Yosef. I forgot this. Why they call us ham? Because they say all oh, you black people are hamites. Read that. This is where it came from. Pius the fifth, by nature, a sinister ecclesiastic delighting in persecution, who treated Jews as the cursed children of ham. Do you see that? They treated the Jews as the cursed children of ham. That's why they say that we're hamites. It came from Pope Pius V. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's all I wanted. Yeah. 15, 17, was succeeded by Gregory. Yeah. So it came from that devil, Pope Pius V. So from there, 
Read that. The definition of Ham. Ham, the younger son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. So there are some scholars that's going to let you know, like Zondervan's, they said the Negroes do not come from Ham. Go ahead. But the Egyptians, mm -hmm. Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Right. So now, go back to Isaiah 29, 16. One more again. Isaiah 29, 16. Surely a turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So what did the white man do? They turned the word of God upside down. They introduced idolatry into the word of God, false teachings, perversion of the gospel. Watch this, Acts 17, 6. The book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. So what Paul and Jason and them were doing was turning everything right side up. Because remember, God said the white man turned the world upside down. Now it's saying that the disciples came and taught and the world went upside down, meaning the correct way it was supposed to be. Everybody understand that? Read it again. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. So, brothers, that's our mission. That's our goal. That's what we are meant to do. Turn this world upside down, meaning turning it right side up. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. From there, give me uh, Malachi 4. So the Bible is our book. It was written by our forefathers under the inspiration of the Almighty God. We lost our understanding because of the perversion that this fourth kingdom has done to us, including, I'm going to throw the Arabs in there too, because we already read that. They had a part to play in this. Malachi 4, verse 4 and 5. But God, there is a God. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses. So now, Malachi in the spirit of the Most High says, Remember ye the law of Moses. Go ahead. My servant. My servant. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb mm -hmm. for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Meaning before Armageddon, before World War III, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet. And what would he do? Read. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Why? And because we would lose our way. The gospel would be perverted. Right. Elijah would have to come and turn the hearts of our fathers, which is this Bible, to the children. We're the children. Elijah would say... Your fathers are Abraham. Your fathers are Isaac and Jacob. Your fathers are Moses. Okay, your fathers are Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel, and Ezekiel. Okay, your fathers are Peter, James, John, and Paul. That's what Elijah would do. Read that again. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. We're the children. Go ahead. And the heart of the children. And to the heart of, our, of the children, which our minds. To their fathers. To our fathers. Why? Because we would lose our identity. We would lose all ration, all common sense. We would lose it all. So God said, I have to send Elijah, the prophet, to help you. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. He said, if I do that, don't do that. I have to destroy the earth. That's what the Lord said. Everybody with me so far? Give me uh, second Ezra 1. I mean, second Ezra 2. Actually, second is just one. I like that. Second is your one. You know, 38 down. And after Elijah came, oh, the, the Lord said, I'm going to send some more. Go ahead. Second is chapter one and verse 38. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people that come in from the east unto whom I will give for leaders. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So guess what? When Elijah came, he taught about, he in the spirit was teaching Abraham. He taught Isaac. 
Oh, y'all understand that? I know that's kind of deep for you. You're like, mm, I'm, I'm confused. His teaching would wake them up. They wouldn't remember that they're Abraham. They wouldn't remember that they're Isaac. But they would know we're the people of the book. Y'all understand that? Read again. Start 38 again. 38 again. Second Edges 1 and 38. And now, brother, behold what glory. And see the people that cometh from the east. Unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hosea, Amos, and Micah. Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah. Nahum, and Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So these spirits would be woken up in the last days after Elijah came and gone. Everybody see that? Go to chapter 2. Second Edges chapter 2. And start two. 17 and 18. Yes, sir. Second Edges 2 and 17. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. For thy help will I send my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah, mm. after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. So y'all see that? So Isaiah would come back. Jeremiah would also come back to help. So the prophets is back. We don't know who they are, but we know prophetically them spirits is back. Mm. And you best to believe they're not out, they're not holding a Bible calling people purple faggots. That's, well, that's not right. what they would be doing. That's right. <laughs> from there, from there. Give me Hosea 3, verse 4 and 5. I'm going to hit y'all with something. Now, this might sting some of you, but mm, it is what it is. Hosea 3. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. This is what we read in Chronicles 2. Go ahead. And without a prince, mm -hmm. and without a sacrifice, mm -hmm. without an image, mm -hmm. and without an ephod. So our image would be lost. That's what it means. Our image would be lost. Not yet. I don't want that. Go ahead. And without an ephod. And without an ephod. And without teraphim. And without teraphim. Those are images. Go ahead. Afterward shall the children of Israel return. Afterward shall the children of Israel return. This is what I want you all to see. So we would lose everything. Our identity, our customs, our heritage. Afterward, the children of Israel would return. That's what Elijah was sent to do. Go ahead. And seek the Lord their God. We're seeking the Lord our God. Go ahead. And David their king. Uh-oh. And shall... Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. It's letting you know somebody else will be back here, too. You wouldn't know who he is, though, and he won't know who he is. We're just going to put that on the table and leave it right there. Go ahead, read it again. Damn. <laughs> Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Mm -hmm. Now, we, 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 we always break it down to Christ because we know, he, of course, he's the king of kings, Lord of And if that makes your mind at ease or praises, just leave it like that. Was that it, Leon? And shall fear the Lord uh -huh. and his goodness. When? In, in the latter days. When? In the latter days. Mm. Are these the latter days, brothers? Yes, sir. You better believe it is. From there, give me Psalms 50 and 21. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. So all the evil, this fourth kingdom, this fourth beast, this nation of Rome, of America has done to us, God kept silent. Read it again. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. They were comfortable saying that God is a white man. They were comfortable painting God as a white man, Christ as a white man, Jesus as a white man, the angels as white, the Jews as white. They were comfortable. They were comfortable. They were comfortable. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee. God said, but I will correct you. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. And set my people in order. Before. That's what y'all seeing right now. This is the gathering, the great awakening that we are all a part of. Do you men understand that? Yes, sir. From there, give me, a, give me Psalms 147. I made a statement. I said the Bible is our book. Right, this is that order that the Bible's talking about. Where was this at? Joseph, where was this? Oh, this is Chicago. All praise to the Most High. 
So that's an example of what setting them in order looks like. Okay. What did I say, Goliath? I didn't hear. Uh, Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Because oh. I said the Bible is our book. Psalm written, 147. Written by our forefathers under the inspiration of the Most High. Y'all get mad if you want at home. Get mad. I don't care. Read. Psalm 147 and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Where Jacob? Go ahead. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Where Israel? He have not dealt so with any nation. God has not showed his statutes and judgments to no other nation. Go ahead. And as for his judgments, uh -huh. they have not known them. The other nations have never known the judgments of God. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. And we supposed to be daggone happy and praising the Lord about that thing. Oh, that's not right. It's right. Praise the Lord for that thing David said. From there, give me Romans 3 and 1. The Bible is our book. And yes, that includes the new covenant too. Go ahead. Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then have the Jew? In order to have an advantage... There must be others you have an advantage over. You know what that goes with? Remember Deuteronomy 7 and 6 where it said, you are special people above all nations. This is saying the same thing. Read it again. What advantage then have the Jew? Uh -huh. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Much every way we have an advantage over all nations. But well, what is that main advantage? Go ahead. Chiefly. Mainly. Because that unto them, unto the Jews, the Israelites, were committed the oracles of God. Was committed the Bible. The Bible is not the book of all races on the planet Earth. It was only committed to us. Everybody see that? Give me Hebrews 8. Mm, is it 10 on 1 or 8? 8 and 8. 8 and 8. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them. For finding fault with the Israelites. He saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Will I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The new covenant is with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. It don't mention the Philistines or Jebusites or Edomites or Ishmaelites. It ain't talking about the covenants have nothing to do with the other nations. Does everybody understand that? Give me 2 Corinthians 2.17. Some of y'all watching right now, huffing and puffing. You just mad, but I love it. Read that. Second Corinthians two seventeen, for we are not as many. Hey, you know what I want to read? Start at verse fifteen. Second Corinthians chapter two and verse fifteen, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. We are unto God a sweet smell of Jesus Christ. When we teach this Bible, the Lord says, this is a sweet smell. Mm. Go ahead. And them that are saved. And that's towards those, when our people that are meant to be saved, they hear the gospel, they say, this smells sweet. Mm. This is sweet to my soul when they hear the gospel, the true gospel. Go ahead. And in them that perish. Then it says, and in them that perish. He's going to explain. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death. To one group, when we teach... This is the smell of death. Mm. They hear that Jesus is black. They go, wait a minute. If Jesus is black, I'm going into slavery. That's right. If Jesus is black, he's going to put me and my children, my ancestors, to death. <laughs> Read it again. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other, the savor of life unto life. But to us, he's the smell of life. We hear this truth. Oh, that smells good to me. That's good to my soul right there. But to the white folks in the other nation, they say, this is death. This is death to my soul. I don't want to hear it. You're a racist! That's what they do. Because they know the proper teaching is their doom, is their gloom. Go ahead. And who is sufficient for these things? Who's sufficient? I mean, who can understand these things? Go ahead. For we are not as many. For brothers, listen, we, we Israelites are not as many. Which corrupt the word of God. We don't pervert the gospel. We're telling you as it is written. Go ahead. But as of sincerity. But as of sincerity. We teach out a sincere heart. Go ahead. But as of God. Uh-huh. In the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So we don't corrupt this Bible. Everybody understand that? Yes, uh-huh. I hope you do. I hope you do. Give me Isaiah 29 and 14. Isaiah 
Isaiah, Isaiah 29. chapter 29. Verse All I want is verse 14. 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work. God said, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work. Go ahead. Amongst this people. Uh -huh. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. Go ahead. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. How will the wisdom of their wise men perish? By you men teaching. Brothers out there teaching. That's how their wisdom shall perish. All the lies established by the Christian Roman church, the Protestant Roman church, is being extinguished now. Being destroyed. Read again. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the hey, put them de devils back up on the screen. Put their wise men back up on the screen. Yeah, that's it. Read it again, Leon. Verse For the 14. wisdom. 14. Yes, yes, for. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men. These are their wise men and these are their prudent men. Shall be hid. Uh-huh. Woe unto that was the bishop. Oh, that was it. So 1 Corinthians 119. Here's the precept. 1 Corinthians 119. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The wise is these white folks. Go ahead. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The prudent is these white folks. God said, I'm going to destroy their wisdom. Okay, read. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Who's the disputer of the Who stands up for white folks? Where are you at? Right. Because everything we, you bring up, we're going to prove you's a liar according to the Bible. Go ahead. Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? All the white, the white man's wisdom is foolishness. Go ahead. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Uh -huh. It pleased God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. By the foolishness of us preaching to save them that believe. To save them that believe. Everybody understand that? That's some good stuff right there. <laughs> Hebrews four twelve. You brothers, us brothers, we must learn our records. Hebrews four and twelve. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful mm -hmm. and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is our weapon, brothers. This is our weapon. Not a gun, okay? Not a physical knife, but the Bible. Read it again, read it again, read it again. For the word of God is quick and powerful mm -hmm. and sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That's the spirit realm that we're dealing with right now. Go mm. ahead. And of the joints and marrow. That's the physical in the world to come. Ha! Damn. And as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. We got to learn this book. This book is our sword. This book is our weapon. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Y'all see that? The weapons of our warfare, brothers, is not carnal. Okay? Understand that. This ain't a physical. That's why we ain't on the street ro rolling around fighting people. Let's just move. Go to someplace else and teach. Read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. But mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. When we use this Bible, we're pulling down strongholds. Christianity is a stronghold. Okay? Christmas is a stronghold. White Jesus is a stronghold in the minds of the people. Our job is to pull it down. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations. Our job is to cast down imaginations. Like what? You might imagine that men and women are equal. Our job is to cast that down. Right. Okay, you might imagine it's okay to be a transformer. We had to cast that down. Right. Everybody understand that? Read that again. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Anything that exalts itself above the Bible, our job is to cast it down. Read on. And bringing into captivity. And bringing into captivity. Every thought. Every thought, brothers. To the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ, the Son of God. Go ahead.
and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When? When your obedience is fulfilled. The only way we can become proper teachers is when we ourselves are obedient to the same words we're preaching and teaching. But if we are living in hypocrisy, the Lord said hey, he can't roll with you like that. Okay? That's why it says, judge not lest you be judged. For with the same measure you judge, shall you be judged. So if you're breaking the Sabbath, how can you teach others, thou shalt not uh, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy? If you are an adulterer, how can you teach people, thou shalt not commit adultery? If you hate and want to kill your brother, how can you teach the law, thou shalt not kill? You can't. That's hypocrisy. Give me 2 Timothy uh, 2.15. Yes, the Bible is a weapon. It can tear down, but it can also build up. So as we tear down imaginations, we also build the spirits of the people that they have a greater day coming, a brighter hope. Everybody understand that? Hope is not lost. Read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. So that's what all of us must do. Stop, spa, study. Pray and apply. Go ahead. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Because if you study, brothers, you will not be ashamed. Go ahead. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You see that part right there? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me help you out there. There have been situations you will have a transgendered homosexual right in front of the camp. And a brother is going over uh, Deuteronomy 28. And he's looking at you going, hey, mm, hey, right. And you're busy reading Deuteronomy 28 and you're reading, give me verse 32, for example. Your sons and daughters will go in the camp. You're not, no, stop, stop. How about Leviticus 18, what verse? 22. 22, how about that? How about, or oh, Romans chapter one verse, what's that verse there? 25. 25, 26, how about that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. You're talking to someone that, ha that hates his neighbor. Okay, how about thou shalt not kill? How about First John, uh, was it 3.15 or 2.15? One of them two. Thank you. How about that? Right, we got to learn to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, know what, what, what weapon to pull at the, what particular time. Everybody understand that? Mm. Y'all got to go into that heavier later on. Y'all got to go into that. Okay, from there, from there, give me... Micah. Let me see the first picture. Let me see the first picture I got there. Let me see the first picture. Yeah. Put that on the screen. M Micah 5 and 1. Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. That precept, obviously I'm giving Zephaniah 2 and 1. Keep the picture right there. Don't move. Or you could give me the next one, the second one. I think it's similar. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Liam. Come on. Wow. The other, other way. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Gather together, O nation not desired. Meaning one mind, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Everybody understand that? Go back to Micah 5 and 1. Come Micah. on, Micah. Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He's telling us to gather ourselves together. Go ahead. He hath laid siege against us. The white man had laid siege against us in 70 AD. Even actually during the time of Christ. I'll say it like that. Go ahead. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. See what it says? They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. So he's going back historically to what they did to Christ. Here's the precept. Matthew 27, 30, Liam. Uh, IT, I need you to put that on the, on the screen. They shall smite the judge of Israel. 
Yep, leave that right there. Go ahead. Matthew 27 and 30. And they spit upon him uh -huh. and took the reed and smote him on the head. Y'all see what they did to the son of God? They took the reed and smote him upon his head. Go back to Micah. Micah chapter 5. And verse 1 again. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the okay, cheek. Okay, you can take it down. I'll take the image down. Read. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, mm -hmm. whose goings whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Get that precept, Matthew 2 and 6. Here's the precept. Matthew 2 and 6. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are not, art, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So it's all prophetic of Christ. Go back to Micah. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until see, the... Mm -hmm. See that part? Therefore will he give them up. Go ahead. Until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. So Christ would give us up. That's when 70 AD came. We went further into darkness and captivity. Read. Then Read that again. Read that again. Therefore will, will he give them up. Until the time that she which travaileth had brought forth. Go ahead. Then the remnant. Then, read this part slow. Then the remnant. Then the remnant. Of his brethren. That's you and I. Shall return unto the children of Israel. See that? That's what uh, uh, Elijah was sent to do. Mm. To return us to the truth that we are the children of Israel. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Come on. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Hey, give me that next picture. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Not that one. The next one. That one right there. Read that again. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Mm -hmm. And they shall abide. Uh -huh. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Christ will be great unto the ends of the earth. Watch this. And this man shall... This man is the same man that we've been reading about, the Son of God, Christ. Go, go ahead, this man. Shall be the peace. He's the peace. What? Hold on. Give me the precept for that. Is Isaiah 9 and 6. This man shall be the peace. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us, for unto us a child is born. Mm-hmm. Unto us a son is given, mm -hmm. and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You know what most people forget? The Lord is setting up a government. He's not setting up a church group. Some of y'all take this like Sunday school. You just call it Sabbath class. This Sabbath class. This is the establishing of a government. I hope everybody understands what you're involved in. The white man understands what this is. You still running around the church. The church, we go to church. You simple as hell. That's why they got, they got on the apostles. They said, this, he's teaching. They're teaching about a king coming and destroying Rome. That's why they put that crime on Christ and assassinated all of them. Now, here you go teaching the same thing, but you don't understand what you're involved in. It's a Sabbath class, Sunday school. Yeah, Jesus loves the little children. Y'all, some of y'all are simple as hell. You're in a government prophesying about the destruction of this government and God setting up a new, true government. Y'all understand that? Government is set up. Guess when Nobody can hear you. Fix his mic. Come on, y'all. When a government is set up, right? When a government is set up, guess what also got to be set up? A military. Mm -hmm. That's the hunters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where we at, Leon? Isaiah 9 and 6. Right. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Y'all know that part? The Everlasting Father. People, why does it call Everlasting Father? Mm. The one, when you read from, well, the ones you 
think you've been dealing with in the Old Testament, that was always Christ. That was always him. Damn. That's why John chapter 1, John tried to explain to you, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. All things were created by him. There was nothing created without him. That was not done. I'm paraphrasing. But y'all get the gist. That has always been Christ. That's why it calls him the everlasting Father. Go ahead. Read that again. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That part right there, the Prince of Peace. Acts 10, 36, please. The Prince, Christ is the Prince of Peace. Acts 10 and verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Let's go back. Micah chapter 5 and verse 5. Micah 5 and 5. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. Now when it says the Assyrian shall come into our land, that's a metaphor for the white man. It's a metaphor for the white man. Coming into our land. Go ahead. And when he shall tread in our palaces, uh -huh. then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. That goes back to Second Esdras, chapter 1, verse 38 to 40. It names 15 men. Seven and eight is how many brothers? 15. 15. That's what it's talking about. Those are the seven shepherds and eight principal men. Go ahead. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. What sword do you think that's talking about? The Bible. Hosea 4 and, not Hosea, I'm sorry. Hebrews, Hebrews. 4 and 12. We just read it. Right. Okay, read it again. And they shall waste the land of Assyria. Hey, put them images up. Let me see. Let me look. Come on, IT. Y'all be yeah. Put them. There's a few up there, right? I like them pictures right there. Is there another one? Because those seven shepherds and eight principal men, there's other men with them. Okay, I want y'all to understand that. There's a great multitude of teachers with them. Okay, and they're gonna read out of the book of the Lord. Okay. What do you say? Right, and they go ahead. Say it in the mic. And they're going to destroy this place. They're going to destroy America. Okay, that's why the Lord said, of course, I'll send for my sanctified ones. You know, that it's all going into those, those, those leaders that God going to send here in the last days. Okay, when you read uh, Isaiah 13, lift you up the banner up on the high mountain, it's, that's the Assyria. It's, it's, that's where it's going into. Yeah. I hope you all understand it. Back to Micah 5. Where we at, Leon? Micah 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. Which is the word of God. And the land of Nimrod. And That's the, America and the land of Nimrod. Go ahead. And the entrances thereof. And the places of business. Go ahead. Thus shall he deliver us. Now notice that part. Thus shall he deliver us. Why does it say, read it again. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrians. He's going to deliver us by the foolishness of preaching. Because guess what? This ain't a physical fight. When it comes physical, we will lose. So the Lord has to intervene and deliver us. Everybody understand that? Read the verse again. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. The Bible. And the land of Nimrod and the entrances uh -huh. thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land. Mm -hmm. And when he treadeth within our borders. Now that part right there. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian. When he cometh into our land, give me that in Joel 2, I think it's verse 17, about I will remove far from off you the northern army. Is that it? 17 to 20, somewhere there. I'm not looking at it. Uh, Joel 2 and verse 20. Let me hear 19. Verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, mm. and ye shall be satisfied therewith. Okay. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Come on. But I will, remo but I will remove far off from you the northern army. I will remove far from off you the northern army. I will remove far from off you the northern 
army. That's America's military. Go ahead. And we'll drive him into a land barren and desolate. And we'll drive him into a land desert, des, uh, de desolate and what? Barren. Barren. That's the Middle East. Go ahead. With his face toward the East Sea. That's the Dead Sea. And his hinder part towards the utmost sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up. Because he have done great things. The Lord's going to destroy their military. Okay. So when we go back. Y'all can put that on the screen. So this it's going to be war. So that's what it means when the Lord says that. So go back to Micah. What are you going to say? Right. It says that he have did great things. The great things is the is the murders that that he's gonna do around that time. Okay, is the is the when the dragon is wrought, I'm gonna come to make war against us. That's the great things that he's gonna do at that time. Mm -hmm. Back to Micah five and six. Micah five and six, and they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian. Win, win. Go ahead. When, when he cometh into our land. When World War Three pop off. And when he Armageddon pop off. When the northern army says, hey, we got to leave these Israelites alone and we got to go to the land of Israel and fight. Read that again. When he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders. Give me the uh, next image. Give me those next image. Not those. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. I think y'all got two. Read that again, Liam, when he? When he cometh into our land, mm -hmm. and when he treadeth within our borders. Right. Read. And the remnant. Now, what, what, what? Okay, you can take him down now, Joseph. I don't need that now. Go ahead, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. Now, this is when we're in the wilderness. I want y'all to get your minds right. This, Because a lot of things has happened. Okay, so now remember a verse above it, it says, Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian. Deliver us and take us where? To the wilderness. Now in verse 7 it says, And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. Give me the next image. Give me the next image. We're going to be in the midst of many people. Go ahead. As a dew from the Lord. Y'all can flip through those pictures that y'all got there. Go ahead. As a dew from the Lord. As the showers upon the grass mm -hmm. that tarrieth not for man, mm -hmm. nor waiteth for the sons of men. Because Christ is our king. He's going to command us. Go ahead. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. And the remnant of Jacob, our people, shall be among the nations. Go ahead. In the midst of many people. As what? As a lion among the beasts of the forest. You know when a, when a lion come, the beasts of the forest move the hell out his way. Go ahead. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. What can sheep do to a lion? Nothing but be food. Go ahead. Who, if he go through. If this lion goes through sheep. Go ahead. Both tread it down and tear it in pieces and none can deliver. That's how we're going to be amongst the nations, brothers. Damn. Go ahead. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries. God says our hand shall be lifted up upon our adversaries. Go ahead. And all, thine, and all thy enemies shall be cut off. These are the same enemies that Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 spoke about. All our enemies going to be cut off. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, mm -hmm. and I will cut off the cities of thy land. See that part? And I will cut off the cities of thy land. Go ahead. And throw down all thy strongholds. That goes back to Obadiah. God said, was it Obadiah or Malachi? He said, they shall build Obadiah, but Malachi. I will throw down. Malachi, Malachi one for you. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand. Uh, that's this place here. Go ahead. And thou shalt have... No more soothsayers. The, all the witchcraft's going to be cut off. Go ahead. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. Read. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So will I destroy thy cities. Where's the destroyed cities? Can somebody put the destroyed cities on, on, the, on the screen here, please? Read that part again. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. Come on. And I will execute vengeance and anger 
and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. God said he's going to do such a destruction such as the world has never heard. So, brothers, 12 tribes! Worldwide. 12 tribes! Worldwide! All praises to the Lord. All praises. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Oh,